Welcome, Think Space Podcast, Self Hired. Welcome, Josh, my brother. What's happening? Josh Biggins has an interesting story. He had three people in his grad class. Uh, he lived pretty much in what is an over what was an oversized treehouse uh, on a small town called Hornby. But yet somehow he came to the Lower Mainland Van City, and like all young people with hopes and dreams. But not like all young people, he has an insane work ethic that I can attest to. He coaches and trains youth and college hopefuls in basketball. He also works at a wealth management firm. And also one of the main reasons we click so well, Josh is a connoisseur of hip hop, uh, well versed in the culture. And now he has linked up with us to do this podcast and the self-hired team. We welcome Josh Biggins. Thank you so much, Kev. It's good to be with the team. Good to be with the self-hired team. Well, he's actually the main host of this show, and I'm just <laughs> introducing him because we're kind of just um, letting everybody know. They've seen me from the self-portraits. They've seen me do other Kev's interviews. a figure, man. Kev is an, Kev's an icon. He's an icon <laughs> around Van City. Don't, don't put that kind of pressure I'm just trying to get the blessing. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm just... Look, uh, you've got a very unique story, and we're just going to just kind of introduce you on this first episode here. Um, so just tell us a bit about your background and how you came to be doing this podcast about where you grew up because I think that's uh, definitely something everybody needs to know uh, about your little about your little but about the little town that you come from yeah it's uh, maybe even a little bit a little bit littler than a little town um, I come from uh, uh, a place that's three ferries away from Vancouver. So you can get to Mexico quicker than you can get there. Um, it's, called oh, Hor- it's called Hornby Island. And it's, uh, it's about 30 nautical miles from Vancouver. But you have to go over to Vancouver Island, right. go up to Horseshoe Bay, catch that ferry, get to Nanaimo. That's a two-hour ferry. Drive all the way up to Buckley Bay. If there's ferry weights, there's ferry weights. You have to go across to get the ferry from Buckley Bay all the way to Denman, drive across Denman Island, get the ferry from Denman Island to Hornby Island, and then bam, you're there. That's, you know, with ferry weights, it's like 10 to 12 hours if you're lucky. I was tired listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate explaining it because it's just yeah. so, it's so much of a mouthful, man. I mean, I had to get to school. Coming up going to school, like we had to get up at 5, 6 a.m. and then the bus would come around pick up everyone on Hornby, which was like 10 kids, graduated with three, as Kev said. And um, then we would get off the bus, get onto the ferry, walk on the ferry, drive, or, you know, get on the boat across the, off the little straight, off the boat, onto the, onto the, onto the bus, pick up the Demon kids, off that bus, onto the next boat, ride across on that boat, onto the next bus. Then we would go hit the middle school, drop them off there. Then we go to Vanier, drop them off there, and we were finally there. So that was maybe like a, I don't know, hour hour car ride or something like that. So I come from a very, very small place. And that's supposed to make you like to go to school. So when I first heard that you graduated with three people, I, I thought you met three friends like you have three friends from your grad class i'm like that's i mean a lot of us some people grad with no they started with a lot of friends <laughs> and, and then they grad with no friends <laughs> but you literally meant there was three people that you graded with there was three people that, that i graded right. with yeah we and it's because it takes forever to get to school and no one wants to go <sighs> hornby's a different place man i mean uh education we don't think about it the way most people do and you know when you leave it's dark and when you come home it's dark so like right going to school is not a huge motivating factor and yeah like a lot of kids moved a lot of kids dropped out you know i mean it was just me and and the nixon twins shout out to them just these two twins that i grew up with um and we we're the only ones that made it through in our grad class um everyone either moved away or dropped out or did whatever they wanted to do but didn't make it through so i mean yeah it's tough going to school is tough when you live on hornby and again it's hornby is a different place describe this what what is life in hornby like so hornby is a tourist market so what i mean by that um is in the summertime there's about ten thousand people mm-hmm. in the wintertime there's anywhere from 800 to a thousand people mm-hmm. so that means there's tons of houses and infrastructure there for a century two months of the year um everyone gets their money in that you know little time frame I and mean, we're hosting some of the best beaches in bc literally the best beach in bc okay, so it's a, beach town. it's a beach town um skimboarding mountain biking whoa, whoa what is skimboarding yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> skimboard you uh, skimboarding is there's so when the, we have a very shallow bay tribune okay. bay so it's like there's just an inch of water for maybe i don't know 10 meters or so so you just 
a skim board is just this piece of like basically wood. You throw it, you jump on it, you can hop up, do tricks on it, go off jumps and stuff like that. Skimboarding culture is a huge thing, man. No but there's way. no, it's because it's a protected bay. There's no, um, there's really no waves. So right, surfing is right. not a thing, right? Right, right. So that's uh, that's what our our little place is about. But this is a small town shit, man. I've never heard of this. Hor- shit. Hornby's, I'm Hornby through and through. Like I, I've moved to Courtney at one point. I've moved in. I've been in Europe. Uh, moved to Denmark for a while. I've lived in what, Vancouver. What was the Europe thing for? That was for basketball. For basketball. Yeah, so I played okay. basketball for a year in, in, in Europe. Yeah. And uh, but I mean Hornby is like a completely alternate universe, partly because of its geographical distance partly because of the people it attracts Mm -hmm. and partly because of it's how it actually looks on a map like Hornby's a lot of people don't know Hornby's not actually from here like the actual body of the land is not from here it actually drifted up from South America so if you look at Hornby on a map in comparison to the other islands all the other islands are fairly um I don't want to say generic, but not really any hills or any water structures. They're very, they just kind of look like a circle or whatever Vancouver it may be. Vancouver coastal almost. Yeah, like. exactly. Right. It, it looks very much Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, Hornby has a, oh, it has a mountain first off, which is when we say a mountain, it's about uh, 400 meters high. But in comparison, the island is 30 square kilometers. Mm-hmm. So that's like five kilometers by six kilometers. That, that's a small. It's ass. tiny. It's it's big enough for someone yeah. to buy. Yeah, there's a neighborhood that's yeah. bigger than that. Yeah, thing. literally. <laughs> and um, so it sticks out in that there's a mountain. So we have tons of mountain biking, and there's different horseshoes around um, the coast. So it's very much not a, just a circle. It's uh, and again, it drifted out from South America, so it has a different geographical landscape, which just is a test to the type of people that are there. Yeah. So we attract alternatives, like alternatives, freaky, freaky type of people, like, like hippies, <laughs> hippies, uh, Rastas, uh, Rasta pe- people that are, um, just fed up with society. I could do a whole, no I could do a whole podcast anarchists. Uh, my mom's an anarchist, uh, very creatives, artist community, mm-hmm. um, lots of musicians, uh, pottery, every form of creative expression is on that Island. Yeah. And, uh, so it's definitely a special place to grow up. But the thing about Hornby is that there's, because there's such a tourist industry, there's not really a local economy. Right. That's what I was asking you before exactly so like it's there's a former premiers of bc have had places there they park their yachts in, in tribune bay now this I, place sounds kind of lit to be honest now that you're describing it. It's, it it turns up and it turns up in yeah. the summertime it turns yeah. up in the summertime but i sure. get what you mean if it's a tourist place during the there's summer there's a there's a divide right uh, what is there the rest of the year what is the other nothing export imports nothing right there's nothing going on i mean like weed is our biggest or excuse me cannabis is our biggest um import export you know what i mean we trade yeah. it you know and it, it's mm-hmm. different um so commodities or whatnot it's literally trade exists in these small places but there's such a huge wealth divide that you know either you are a multimillionaire with you know multiple assets multiple multiple properties and you own a property here or you're a local which you know not a lot of locals are making damn near any money and so you know you know i grew up in hell but it's a block away from heaven do you know what I mean? I, I get that in the context I can put it in because within Vancouver, within Burnaby, where I grew up and everything, it, it has that element where I grew up in a very kind of socially deprived kind of area mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of Burnaby. But then a few blocks away, there's some very, very nice Upscale. houses. And if anybody knows Burnaby, there's Edmonds, which is a lot of uh, social housing and whatnot on that street. And around that street back then, now it's a lot of condos going up like everywhere in Vancouver. Right. But down the hill would be Deer Lake. And those Deer Lake, if anyone knows Deer Lake, look it up. That's multi-million dollar homes back then. Everything's multi-million dollars right. in Vancouver now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. back then, those are lakefront properties. Right. So that's kind of the hell between heaven kind of thing that you're describing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what does that look like on the island? On an island, on an isolated a, island like that. Well, it looks different, man. We just, <laughs> my experience is different from other people that have grown up on that island. Mm-hmm. Um, so that manifests itself in that you don't see it. And what I mean is that, you know, 
if there's these large mansions or large houses on these, we have specific spots that are gated and they're behind trees. You can't see them. But once you go there, you're like, oh my God, I, I didn't know that this, there was a, a $4 million house here. That's insane. And then... It, and these are summer homes of the summer wealthy homes, of BC. Uh, yeah, a lot of retired thing? people. You know, um, okay. baby boomer wealth has right, hit there right, for okay. sure. So that kind of stimulates the economy in a way. Um, but then on the other side, I mean, uh, like. <laughs> I grew up with all my clothes in a box, man. Like it was like my house originally was built as a greenhouse. Yeah, that was the tree house I was talking about. That Different house. Okay. Different. Not so so we were talking before the podcast about um, uh, my place or whatever. But um, so my parents split very young. Um, yeah. My parents never really had a good relationship. Um, and uh, around when I was four, they were never married, but they moved away, basically. Um, when I say moved away on Hornby, what that means is literally 600 meters down the road. <laughs> so moved it's like... away from uh, each from other? From each other. From okay. each other. So uh, to, to separated. Yeah. How, did they meet in Hornby? Um, in... <laughs> On. <laughs> on Hornby? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> in Hornby. You got to think about it in your mind. Hornby yeah. is just like a little rock. Okay. <laughs> it's just like a little rock. On Hornby. Um, yeah, no, they, they, uh, they met their... Um, and that's a that's a whole nother story but basically um my dad moved like maybe 600 meters down the road and he has a plot of land my mom has a plot of land and you might think oh well they're, they're landowners they're wealthy that's like mm -hmm. literally their only asset and my dad got it when it was literally like 10 10 acres was five grand in a handshake and a thousand dollars down mm -hmm. you know what i mean in the 70s so um they split i mean my, my mom's house growing up was like literally a greenhouse that was converted it was a greenhouse that was a couple rooms and it was just like it was for growing mushrooms it was growing for it was for magic mushrooms mm -hmm. and then they duplicated it and it was built uh into um a space where uh, the original owner was building a boat so it was just like a garage and a greenhouse and a living quarters yeah and like a little living quarters and a little bedroom and so when my mom came in came in and uh bought it a couple of years later we kind of converted that into a a living space you know what i mean so it's just like there's one side of it that's extremely beautiful but there's also another side of it that's terrible and uh there's a lot of low income there but the thing is is that i never the, the first time i even understood what like hood was or project was was mm -hmm. like in, in hip hop music and rap music right. when I stole my sister's Dr. Dre chronic album and when I stole my sister's uh, 50 Cent um, Get Rich or Die Trying and I was like, oh, people live like that and it's personified in this way? Like, that's crazy. To me, it was just like, no, 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 like, yeah, like we might make, you know, 15K a year, 20K a year, but this is just like, I'm still going to school. It was like, yeah, I might, you know, not have new clothes, but I'm not like disenfranchised. Yeah. I'm like, fine, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, like we have government food and all that stuff, but it's like, it's still food. So I didn't really understand what that was type yeah. thing. So, um, yeah, growing especially, up was a little different, especially on an Island. It's very isolated from the rest of culture. It, um, this is in the nineties too, right? Like people don't understand, like we didn't have internet, like this is going to sound really hood, but like we didn't have internet, like we yeah. had a landline and it was like, like I just got my mom Wi-Fi, like literally i want to say 18 months ago and right. like taught it the craziest thing is like yo mom this is how you use a mouse <laughs> yeah this is what a yeah. space bar is <laughs> you know what i mean type yeah. thing so um yeah we didn't know what it was and i didn't like people didn't know me and the players i coach uh the people i know professionally in business uh in wealth management and private equity and people that i know just throughout life educationally like they don't know a damn thing about me you know they just see what's presented to them so that's one of the things with this podcast i hope you guys can dive a little bit more in but it's just like i never looked at it and i still don't look at it as like what was me that's not my thing like it's never been my thing and it will never be my thing mm -hmm. because first off nobody cares like nobody cares what your situation is people care what, what you're presenting yourself um as to the world today so I don't really care that you grew up in government housing, eating government cheese. That doesn't matter to me. What are you today? And I get it. Like, to me, like if 50 can make it out of that situation, I'm a fucking white, white male in Canada. 
So yeah. like, there's no reason to complain. Yeah. I have cousins that aren't doing well, uncles that aren't doing well, and like, oh, you know, like, you know, the the financial crisis hit us hard. I ain't got no job. I got no education. I drug addiction. We have mental health in our family, and it's just like, there's kids in Haiti right now, like yeah. eating mud pies to fill their stomach. Yeah. Like, you, you, you know what I mean? Someone else is always having a worse day. That's exactly. For sure. Exactly. So I, somewhere I never cared. in the world, someone else is having a worse day. And I never want it ever be a char- charity case. Yeah. Like, um, respect me for what I present myself mm-hmm. as. Mm-hmm. But from, from what I understand or from what I've he- heard so far, it's a lot different than most people might have perceived about living on an island. It sounds like paradise if, yeah. you know, this is where people go for tourism and whatnot, but that wasn't the case for you. At what point do you think you had it in your mind that I'm going to leave this shit one day. Man. Or is that something everyone does and everyone always leaves a small town like that? Probably 10. Probably 10 years old. At 10 years old, you're like, I'm getting out of this shit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> at around 8 or 9 years old, I, re- I started to realize there was... Um, a difference in financial setups Mm -hmm. and that angered me as a young kid. Mm -hmm. So I was, and this is not compared to rich people. Like this is compared to average people. Mm -hmm. And like the poverty line is just crazy. But as soon as I started to realize that, okay, they're different than me, I'm coming from a different perspective and understand, understand the context of this. This is not, Oh, I'm living different than people in Vancouver. Like Vancouver is like LA to us. Like right. to me, Vancouver is like New York, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like it's so much bigger than anyone that's grown up in Vancouver. So it was like just the people that I'm right next to in my direct environment. Oh, they're very much different. As soon as I realized that I was like, Oh no, no, no. I need to, I, I need to use this instrument called money and use it to get me the fuck up out of here. Mm-hmm. So like I started working, man, my a mentor to me um, is this gentleman named Jeff Bishop. He gave me a job when I was 12 years old. Um, and I was a big 12 year old, but you shouldn't be working at 12 years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was 11 turning 12 and uh, he gave me a job as a, uh, a dishwasher at the only lodge or resort, if you will, at the island. And so basically I just seeked out whatever the best um, establishment was on the island. Okay, I want to I have the best job. So when I was like 11, I was like, I want to have the best job. I need money, but I don't want to just work at the grocery store. Like I want to work at the best establishment. So I found Seabreeze. Jeff was the manager at Seabreeze. I've typed up my resume, da, 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 da. And he gave me a shot as a dish boy. And I worked there in different, I mean, I was a dish boy for a couple of years, but I worked there from when I was 11, 12, to when I was like 19, 20. Mm-hmm. every summer just coming back if i couldn't work there just get your foot in the door and just money slowly everybody just knows money who you like are. that was it was like okay you grow up in a situation with no money or sorry it wasn't even that my thought process was way different my thought process was i don't have nice things i don't have decent things like i learned to sew when i was like five because it was like your socks rip fucking sew them your shirt rips fucking sew it like we had a free store and I was only getting any, like for free store is just a place where it's like, it's like a recycling everything. Basically it's a hippie concept, but it's amazing. And it was just like, yeah, you need underwear, go to the free store, bro. You ever got secondhand fucking underwear? That shit's gross. Wow. You know what I mean? So it's just like, okay, I don't have, wow. you're really base. painting the picture for me now. Cause at first I'm like, man, that's, if, if that's where everybody goes to get away from everything. What does it sound? Now I understand. Like, it's a, you're it's really a little bit the different. Picture now. It's a little bit different. So it yeah. was like, Okay, I'm eating Rice Krispies all the time, and it like food is hard to come by. Clothes are hard to come by, and I don't mean to I don't mean to say this to say what was me. I mean to say this is in this shaped my perspective. So it was like okay, pops isn't around or is around. Or there's violence and there's different things going on. I understand. What is the catalyst? To all this? Okay, well he's acting violent because he doesn't have any money 
so he's hungry or he's acting violent because he doesn't doesn't have any money to fuel his addiction or same thing with her or whatever it may be and it would always come back to money it would always come back to money so i was like okay money's the tool right okay okay okay. young get money's how we get out of this so i was like okay let's get a job how do we get money let's get a job right i mean Hmm. selling dope is not really a thing like my mom showed me how to roll a joint when I was like yeah. 11, 12. Like, yo, this is how you do it. Um, smoking weed is cool. Like, it wasn't like cool as in the thing to do. It was just like, this is, it's like when your your dad gives you a beer at 12 yeah. and it's like, watch the game with me, son. Yeah, yeah. Especially thing. in rural areas. That's yeah, exactly. Right. Common. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, yeah, let me show you how to do this. Like, this is, this is ganja. Yeah. And, and so. Ganja burns. <laughs> Sorry, I had to, I had to, I had to. 2018. And so it was just like. I needed, I knew that I needed money. So I was like, I would work 40 hours a week in the dish pit, just washing dishes or working double shifts, doing like 50, 60 hours a week, man, like call them up. Like they'll tell you the stories about, man, that job was my life. Yeah. Like I love that shit. Yeah, like I really like that work ethic too. I, like that was Jeff Bishop, man. God bless his heart, man. I would not be the man that I am today without him. He was just like, listen, I want to give you a shot. Now you're in here working with um, grown ass men. This is what they do for a living. Like yeah. you know, these chefs, this is what they do, right? Like don't come in here. Like this isn't just, oh, selling fruit. I used to work yeah. at a fruit stand before that. Yeah. Because I used to just get, <laughs> my mom liked corn. So I used to just go to this fruit stand and like break down boxes and ref- refill fruit stands just to get like, I work all day. He sent me home on my bike with a bunch of fruit. Yeah. And so this Not is even money. It was just, like, yeah. And then I was like, food, yeah, literally. exactly. Right. And he gave me some of the wow. tips at the tip jar, uh, case junior, um, my guy anyway. Wow. So he would just, it wasn't like that. It was like, listen, no, 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 no. We're the best establishment on the Island. Like p- we have real people coming here from Vancouver, LA, wherever it may be. They need to have a good experience. And part of that is with you washing these dishes. So don't fuck around. Right. I, I, we understand you're 12, but we're not going to give you any handouts cause you're 12. Like you have this job. We could have gave this job to the 16 year old, the 17 year old, the 18 year old that's just graduating, mm-hmm. but we didn't, we gave it to you. So like show up. And I was like, Oh, okay, this is what working this is, is about. This is real world stuff. I was like, okay. I like that. I was like, cool. So I just fucking worked the hell out of that job. Like I worked, I was in the district for like three, four years, man. Just like from mm-hmm. 11, 12 to like 15 probably. And worked my way up to a prep cook. Worked my way up to a sous chef. Worked my and, way up. And that, that kind of stuff shapes you too. Because now I, from knowing you so, so far, I kind of see the beginnings of that. And I think well, that's where it makes us very similar. Because my first job, I've, I've done so many things since I was 10, 11, 12. Yeah. I remember my mom works at a bakery and she'd bring home all the extra stuff that they were going to throw away. We'd bag them up. Take that. We'd bag them Take up. That. I lived in an apartment and we knocked on every door. I knocked on every door and I'd sell them a whole bag for like three bucks. <laughs> my mom would let me keep all of it. She was getting it from, from work for free anyway. That's right? crazy. So she instilled that in me very early on. My first job was washing dishes too at a, a fast food restaurant called Arby's. You know Arby's yeah. roast beef? You know Arby's roast beef. <laughs> I know Arby's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. see at, well, the way you talk now it makes a lot of sense right because uh in our previous conversations you'd say things like i understand poverty i know i'm like dude you live in an oversized treehouse the pictures you showed me <laughs> um before we go on just to tell tell everyone about that that driftwood house that your dad built yeah because so. that that's that what perked my ears i'm like damn this is like real rural amish small town kind of living it like, really is man so here sounds like for city city slickers city folks like us that sounds like paradise like whoa so you know people who want to get away they want to live in those kind of so check this out for oh, for, for listeners Bro, this, is this is a documented book of my, the house i grew up at kev's checking it out right now uh for viewers um Am I looking at you're looking so exactly? you're looking at right now that's the shop that oh, my dad that built says biggins right there exactly says, tim tim biggins shop is unlike any structure that i've ever seen alternate universe is the title <laughs> on yeah. the top i mean the, the the listeners can see this if they're watching it on youtube so um, oh that's your pops right there and that's pops right there so that's the house i grew up in so basically wow. as you go through this i mean the story there is my pops came um he actually came from money which is crazy his uh, grandparents owned a fabricating business in san francisco and uh he- sorry i have to say in my head it sounded a lot it looked a lot more grandiose. So that's cool that's way. the shop. That's the shop. Okay. That's where he worked at. Now flip the page. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was looking at just the flip, shop. Yeah. It's called Candy Cottage. He named it. 
So that's the cool, cool, interesting so that's shop. the shop. You got a lot of cool stuff in there. This shit looks like Main Street. <laughs> Main Street. That's what Main Street looks like on and, purpose. And then you flip the page, you get to the actual house. Right. So this is the thing that you I seen in your phone once. So this is uh, Kev's reading a book or uh, looking at looking at a book called uh, Builders of the Pacific West Coast by Lloyd Kahn. And uh, so that helps. There's. Hel a, there's a a fucking rope in the middle of your house. There is, there was a, that there is was some a rope. Jungle book shit. There was a rope. Did you have to climb that rope up and down to get to your? Room? Uh, yeah, you could. There was a ladder, but we, I didn't really use it. I just used the ropes to oh get up and down. God, man. Um, Kev's gonna do his thing. I'll show you guys and and uh, what he's looking at. But basically, pops came from San Francisco, and he was he grew up in the '60s and '70s. My dad's like 70 years old now, right. and. Uh, uh, he, he he was an activist. He went to jail for um, uh, refusing to go to Vietnam and fight in a okay. war. So almost like a yeah. Lot of, okay, I've met I met draft dodgers. Yeah, that uh, moved to Canada for that. So that's exactly reason. what he was, and he was uh, he was a he was a hippie movement, peace and love, uh, honesty, things like that. And he uh, we had went to jail for two years for for refusing to go basically. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as he got out, when he was twenty one, um, went with this girl uh, named Sabra. They hooked up, and uh, that's how my oldest brother was made. But he was about I want to say nineteen, twenty, maybe twenty one. Right. Um, and they moved up. He was on a a, a boat going up to Alaska to go fishing because his parents and him basically he was on a completely different uh, tip than you know business entrepreneurship he was on you know fuck the system yeah. capitalism is evil he comes from that late it, 60s exactly, 70s rebellion right that that's, generation that's a whole podcast in itself that is an interesting so that's yeah so that's topic, the, that's man. the um, that's the school of thought he subscribed to. So he went up to Alaska basically and uh, stopped at this little place called Hornby Island just to gas up with his, uh, uh, with his crew and all right. that. They, we have a small marina on the island and uh, just spent a couple of days, met a couple of people and uh, fell in love, never left basically. And so... Um, hey, it sounds like the beginning is a good story. It's, right? a, it's, a, it's a very long story. So that's mm -hmm. in the 70s. He ended up buying property. Right. And then in turn, he had nowhere to live. So he actually lived in, a, and this is far before my time, but he lived um, with Sabra and himself. And uh, Sabra, was, Sabra was pregnant at the time with my eldest brother. And uh, they were living in a teepee in a field. Uh, <laughs> and he was just doing odd jobs. So he has yeah. a background in carpentry and, and all that yeah. stuff. And they were just doing odd jobs to just get by. And it was the 70s, man. Like, yeah. he could tell the story way better than I could. Yeah. But it, it was, I hear that a lot. It was the 70s, It was the man. 70s. That's just what they did, I <laughs> it guess. It was the 60s, man. It was and the so, 70s, man. But uh, winter was coming and they needed a place to stay. Yeah. So uh, if you notice on that diagram, there's the spiral. And then there's a side part. If you notice on the sketch at the top, yeah, the there's a side part side part right there and that was actually where they lived originally so beneath it was like a firewood fire shed and it was on stilts kind of like those places in uh, tropical places that flood a lot yeah. um and they just lived in that little one bedroom thing yeah, right. uh they lived there for for a couple years while he built the entirety of that house and he just built it with uh the trees that were around him and the uh, driftwood off the beach and wow. uh there's a story uh you know hopefully maybe one day uh we'll get him on here and and he can uh, say a couple words about that but uh that was just kind of the alternate it wasn't like oh let's go out and buy a house let's go buy lim uh, lumber it's like no nah, let's let's make this let's let's breathe this let's, let's this is a passion mm -hmm. project let's i want my house to be my heaven i want my house to be my creative outlet i want my house to define who i am so it's a very open concept very uh nature inspired and uh very architecturally sound uh very cool cool place so that's the story behind do you think to him that. it was a very adventurous time 100%. And he wasn't thinking about his uh, quote unquote future. Not at all. And and that's just kind of spur of the moment, or was it just this is, I, I stopped on this island for a reason, and it's almost like you know, destiny or faith. And yeah, this man. This is where I want to be, especially in a time like the '70s where everything was just going to shit, especially in America. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, man. Like I think that he lived very much in the moment. And to this day does, which is amazing. And we say that all the time now because we're caught up in um, life and life takes us away. Our routines take us away. And all of a sudden, boom, we're dead. And the consequence to that, there's a good and bad side to everything. This man has lived nine lives. He's almost died a hundred times, I swear. Um, 
and come back. But he lived in and built that absolutely on the spur of the moment and just being a creative person, not thinking about future, but just thinking about today and crafting and building. And But the flip side of that is that when you live like that, you don't worry about things like money. You don't worry about things like the repercussions of your actions. You worry about love. You worry about what it is right now. And you're not an architect to your life. You're living in every moment, which is beautiful. This man has a, a heart of gold, but is, uh, at the same time, you know, took many wrong turns just simply because you don't think ahead, right? So that's, that's, that's a product of what that is and how that uh, manifested itself in into creation and a lot of that stuff still that's like instilled in me so i grew up in that house yeah. and uh you know i have uh four brothers and sisters we grew up in that house uh all staggered throughout mostly with different women um okay. so, pops was a rolling stone <laughs> pops is still a rolling stone still a rolling stone and God. um so yeah unfortunately that house burned down uh in 2009 uh, due to a cause still unknown, but uh, luckily it was documented in this book yeah. uh, before this is, it this did. Is, this is a piece of history that your family is going to be a part of. I yeah, mean, I think this is really cool. It's pretty cool. It's the pretty story cool. behind that, I'm glad that we got in on the podcast. It's very cool to document, too. man. It's very cool to document. There's very, um, very few people on this planet like that, man. So, mm-hmm. um, But yeah. let's take it all the way back to you. And um, what I've noticed in our conversations so far in this podcast and even before is that the money does come up quite a bit it with, does. with you and it's not to say you're a greedy person or <laughs> all you think about is the mud dollar signs but i noticed that the concept of wealth the concept of not having comes up a lot and it kind of drives your focus um so you were saying how you realized that you needed money to escape um, so I want you to kind of talk about sure. your comfort zone of knowing when you said you decided at nine, 10 years old that this is, I'm leaving this island. At what point do you think that you put it into action and what were some of the thoughts and how did you get over knowing that to leave your comfort zone or was it so uncomfortable that you had to leave no matter what? There's no choice. Like that's the thing. When you get put in certain certain situations, say in any facet of life, if you're going into an interview or something, there's a point when you go past that door where it's like, listen, I can't walk out. So it's like, either want to do this, we're going to go on and, and manifest, excuse me, these things that I want, or we're just going to stay here and that's going to be it. So it's one or the other. It's complete and utter success in every facet or it's complete and utter failure in every facet. So it wasn't like, and that's an unpopular opinion. Another unpopular opinion is that, and this is tough to say, but a lot of my grad class, so to speak, or my age group, my demographic that I grew up with is still there, so to speak. And I don't say that with a negative connotation at all. I say still that- there Still on, on, on Hornby. Island never left never left or left briefly and came back and that's not to say that's a negative thing that's actually working wonders for the island and businesses are popping up but that me leaving i completely i completely alienated myself completely alienated myself i literally when i was um so what got me off the island was basketball so i started playing in the eighth grade uh someone told me i had a future so i wanted to go with it basically what happened was i had a coach that said you could be good at this and then but you have to be here for practices so as i said earlier it's a lot of travel the last ferry is at 6 p.m you can't make any practices so first ferry is at 7 30 last ferry is at six in my current lifestyle i'm up three hours before that now and i'm home four hours after that now so it's like there's no way we can make practices or anything like that so i had um i don't, I don't even think i had a talent i just had a work ethic and i applied that in basketball and that sh- that was a, a bit of a bright light for people you know at that school at gb venue so my coach basically just gave me an opportunity where he was like listen you can come and you can play uh, but you have to be here now i didn't have any connections because i spent all my time working that's another thing people don't realize when 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 people from disadvantaged situations go in to uh regular life or regular economy or uh regular culture that's what that's why people don't understand white privilege like if you come from a different disenfranchised environment 
all of that time that you should have spent developing social skills, developing um, uh, any skill in general, whether that's from uh, academic standpoint or a social standpoint or a physical standpoint, yeah. all that time was devoted to surviving. So you never got that developmental phase. And so that will hinder you for decades. So that's something people don't understand. Quick sidebar, but basketball got me up out of that. So when I was 14, I was like, listen, dad, I need, I need to live in Courtney. And I was like, mom, I need to live in Courtney. They were in a legal battle at the time. And, um, that didn't hinder me at all. I, basically I legally had to be with my mom, um, and not have an association with my dad. He had visitation rights. It was very ugly. Um, and I was like, listen, I'm gone. I'm gone. And I took the money. I had my dad actually supported me, but I took the money that I had from working at Seabreeze and then I had saved that all. See, when I was like 12, 13, I like blew it all because when you first get money, yeah. I don't want to mountain at bike. <laughs> so when I say blew it all, I was probably made all like, the porno mags, all the candy, all that stuff. And I get those 25 cent candies. That was all me. Yo. Um, girls, I got you. You want those, uh, <laughs> those go. Red Let's Bulls? <laughs> I got you. Um, so I probably made like five, six grand in the summer, something like that, 10 grand maybe. Yeah. But that was like stupid. That's, all, that's stupid, stupid amounts, amounts of money. Stupid amounts of money for a 12 year old. And that's that, a lot of money for some people now. I was making, man, I was making like $9 an hour or something like that plus tips. So it oh, was like crazy. Time? Yeah. Dude, you're lit, dude. I was lit. I was $9 lit. an hour? Minimum wage was I think like seven something or $8 yeah, or something like that. Yeah, my first job was like seven fifty or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I know. So I was, I was on the come up. Sure. Um, anyway, so I, I took that money that I had saved. So by... 14, 15, I was like, okay, I need to save money. So I saved from that summer, uh, my grade nine year, I moved to Courtney, I got my dad. Which to, is a ferry away. Two ferries away. So two and that's ferries. that's the main island, right? That's, that's the, the main island. island. So, okay. Just uh, so everyone knows what the difference is. So yeah, so it's Hornby, ferry over to Demon, ferry over to Buckley Bay, 45 minute drive up to Courtney. So I had to move to Courtney where the closest high school was. Yeah. So my dad that's actually- That's what this man had to do just to go to school. Literally, uh, yeah. literally. And that's what, um, that's what so many others had to do. And that's why a lot of people didn't finish. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my dad actually supported me when I said I wanted to play basketball. I mean, he, he very much supported me. And then he's like, listen, I'll, I'll sign the lease and I'll come and, and come to Courtney when I can. Mm -hmm. Again, he was self-employed his whole entire life, didn't have a lot of money. So it was like, I'll try to help you out if I can. I mean, at the end of the day, I just ran myself dry. I lived in a, a basement suite basically by myself for my grade nine year. Um, just to play basketball so I could make practices and I could get in the gym at 6 a.m. And that's when like, I was just, that's, that's that year, grade nine year. That's when I, that's when the word relentless started or not even the word, but the idea of rel relentlessness yeah. started to come in. When did you find basketball? Man, I found basketball, um, at the eighth grade, you had to walk through the gym to get to the bus. And okay. so I so just pretty, picked it up that, for, for a lot of people that's considered late. That's, right? that's extremely late. Yeah. Okay. That's extremely but late. But when so. you, when you found found it you locked in and you went not even man when i found it it was crazy I, I had i had actually been fortunate enough to get tennis lessons from an early age not one-on-one but the school got an instructor to come by i went to a community elementary school yeah. and uh and i really liked it and i was really good at it and when i picked up a basketball i was like oh i'm not good at this uh, but i really like it you know yeah. what i mean like okay so it clicked in your head i was like i'm not good at this right now but everyone, like, I idolized those grade 12s, and they were all about being in the gym early and just working your ass off. I was yeah. like, oh, so if the variable's hard work, I, this is all me. This is 100% me. I'm going to blow yeah. all these guys out of the water. Yeah. So I was not really good at it and not passionate about it, but I saw the potential because the variable was work ethic. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. That's what people don't understand. When I say, oh, were you passionate about it? Did you take to it right away? No. Here's the thing. Passion's developed. Passion is developed. You're not passionate about something until you've worked tirely, and tirelessly you see results at it. from it. Exactly. And that's where the passion grows. You don't just walk into something and say, oh my God, I love it. Like that's a facade to me. Yeah. To me, it's like you have to go in, put in time, put in hours, and then you start to understand, oh wait, I love this art. I love this there's craft. There's a process to it. And when you're in the process, you fall in love with it because you see results happening over time exactly. that fuels your passion for and so it. you're like oh uh you know maybe i can be good at this like the same thing with rappers man you start writing rhymes it's not like okay yeah rhyming words it's cool it's like no no no. 
you start working at it then you start to explore you know syllable structure yeah. and you go in and all of a sudden you know next thing you know you that's all you do that's your life right yeah, so same it, same thing with media and, and interviews and podcast and things like that things like that <laughs> with the content game you yeah. just get you get into it and you go into it and so that's that's how it was with me in basketball and if if it wasn't for that uh, like a it's corny, but like basketball saved my life 100%, 1,000%, because yeah. it took me out of those situations, man. I mean, when I was in, so I, when I moved off Hornby, like obviously things were tough and a lot of 14 year olds don't live on their own type thing. And dad kind of came in and out, man. I was actually like loaning my dad money at that time. It was a weird time okay. in my life. I started like moving a little bit of weed here and there and, okay. and just doing different things that I do. Cause I saw a profit on it and I needed money bad and I didn't have yeah. time to like do anything legitimately. And, uh, <laughs> damn. So your come up is not come up. different from people growing up in, east vancouver man i mean to me it was a herb and it was a herb that i had access to because frankly my parents grew it yeah so i knew i could just i could have you know no cost base Mm -hmm. go in and flip those dime bags for 10 or 20 sacks and then that's lunch so like why wouldn't i do that and then there's basketball fees so like literally like in my mind it was just like hey i just I just need to break down 30 dime bags, sell those, and then that's my basketball fees type thing. And that's yeah. literally what it was for like a grade nine me. And no one knows this. I've never said that out loud. Except no, the this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it. But you know what? I had an idea because <laughs> when you're talking to people that understand this kind of thing, the vibes was just there. You and know, you, hustlers know hustlers, you right? You seem to understand a lot of cultural trap talk. So now, <laughs> now it all makes sense. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah that's, so, that's insane that, um, you had to do that early on living at, but 14. man, I'm, I'm telling you, it wasn't even in my mind. It was never that it's still not that to the day. It the was basketball was driving you. It was just like, it, you no, it was, it was, it was make it. Yeah. It was just find a way, make it yeah. just, it doesn't Did matter. Did you feel alienated at that time? Did you feel really on your own? Kind of, you were either going to s- no. Not at all. You didn't have your parents to support you. Because that, that's when you grow up in something, you don't know it to be wrong. Okay. So it, it was normal to you. Exactly. You had nothing else to compare it to. But when you came to Courtney and you saw how other families, other kids were living or their family situations or how they went to school, did you not look at it like, oh, that's a lot different than what I'm used to. That's a lot different than the family I have. Man, about the first day, I remember the first time I actually went over to someone's house. We were just like, you know, come over, hang, play video games, whatever the hell you used to do back then, 2K8 or something like that. Yeah. And uh, and I remember being super jealous and super emotional. And then as soon as I went home that day, they give me a ride home. I'd be like, yo, just drop me off a couple blocks away. I'll just walk the rest of the way. I don't want you to see where I'm living type thing. I was not living in a good neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, <clears throat> I was like, yeah, my mom's going to pick me up here or whatever. I just lie to everybody, yeah. basically. And, um, and then I was like, the next day I woke up and I'm like, man, fuck those guys. Those guys are all soft. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I was super, super aggressive and I, and I, um, mm-hmm. I just didn't. It's I the didn't anger that, that fuels you. It's the, it's the frustration. It's the anger that kind of fuels it. You're not really understanding how to deal with that at that age. So you internally put that off as like fuck the world it's me against the world that was the default man that's why that's why yeah, i gravitated to hip-hop music do, and uh, that's what hip-hop is and mm. that's how where hip-hop's birth from and a lot of us find it and it's crazy how we all come from very different backgrounds different ethnicities different um neighborhoods so a lot of people don't know rural areas are gangster man like it's crazy uh, people don't who don't aren't from canada don't understand that it's the highest crime rate happens in towns like Langley, um, Abbotsford. Yeah, deep in uh, Surrey. All that yeah, stuff. yeah. It's, it's, it's the smaller towns that have these things. So people don't know how, how, how it goes down out there. Man, everyone used to joke, man, because I, I always was like, I was a little shit kid. I was, like, I, was, I, I, was a, I was a little wankster kid type thing. And I was about the hip hop music. I was about the basketball. I was selling this, selling that. Yeah. And I'd be like, man, yeah, yeah, you know, Joss, he, he came up on uh, uh, the mean streets of Hornby, or, or, or should we yeah. say the mean street? Or should we say the mean dirt road? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, hey, you get it, but you don't get it. And you get I was like, it, yeah, but you, it's you, funny, but you don't understand. Like exactly. How. And that that was yeah. what was like that was the hardest part was is just like listen, th- there was no plan B. There's still no plan B to this day. There's no yeah. plan B. It was like basically, 
as much, okay, now I'm trying to chase a basketball thing. School was not important to me at all. I was flunking out, almost failing. I, I swear to God. Um, and I'm not that much of a dumbass. So that, that was, I was doing terrible. And, but the thing was, was like, listen, I just, I have to make it in basketball because like going back was such a devastating thought. Yeah. Not because, and there was all the kids there were still living on the island. It's not even like there was a bar set. It was just like, I just yeah. can't go back to those situations. Yeah. I can't be living in those houses. I can't be like, I, I grew up around a lot of domestic violence. I grew up, I mean, I was hit as a kid, I had a lot of drug abuse. There was a lot of bad things happening, you know, um, coming up as a, ch as, a ch as a child. And I just wasn't trying to go back and regress to that because I knew that that's a trap. I just knew it was a trap. And I, I, I knew that I had to leverage somehow financially a way to make this work. And that's why to this day, circling back to your point, money's always in the back of my head because it's not like, oh, I want to be rich. Yeah, it's like I want freedom. Like yeah. I want complete freedom. Because you know what the other side is. You you can you be know a what slave the other to money. Extreme side. You is. can be a slave to money, right? Yeah. Like people don't understand. Like yeah, you might drive down East Hastings every, every once in a while and see it, but like you don't understand how crazy crackheads really are. Like yeah. you don't understand what. Like I'll never forget the first time I saw someone smoke crack, and it was like it was. You're looking at them like man, that's the most blissful moment of their life. And yet there's this complete hell they go through. Oh, yeah. And so, like, I remember, man, Phil Hanko, rest in peace. Um, Phil Hanko was a dude. This is a quick side story, but I got to tell Phil. Phil Hanko was a dude that um, he was known in Vancouver for, for doing robberies, basically. And, and he was part of a Vietnamese gang, mm -hmm. uh, even though he was white. But he made his way in with the Viets. And... Um, he had got real messed up on heroin. And so they sent him. My mom had connections in Vancouver th through that culture. And this isn't like street gang shit. This is like organized. Yeah. Um, and he came to, they sent him to my mom to um, basically get away on Hornby and just decompress because it is a place of healing. It's a yeah. place of love. And uh, his addictions continued basically. And I remember just sitting on a porch. Uh, we had this little cabin we used to rent out. And just sitting on a porch and him just lighting up and him telling me, yo, yo son, you know why they call it crack? Because of this sound right here, Rice Krispies. And I was like, what? He's like, snap, crackle, pop. That's why they call it that. And I was like, oh, my God. And I, so that was like the reality that I was going back to. And he actually died in that cabin, which is crazy. On so, a, from overdosing? No, this is, this is out of a book, but it's not. It's real life. So there's that. That house right there, which Kev looked into earlier, which is a masterpiece. And we also had a side cabin on my mom's property. Yeah. So we rented it out. That was my mom's only legitimate source of income. Um, and so he had actually gotten in a fight with my mom that day. I had to go back, break it up. And he was all fucked up on all kinds of stuff. There was a wood stove. And he was from the city. He didn't know how to work a wood stove. And he was all fucked up yeah. on whatever he was on. So I had to go down, break up that fight. My mom, listen, let's just go up. Whatever. Don't worry about him. He'll be fine. She's like, Joss, go down, check the fire, make sure everything's good. He doesn't know how to do this stuff. And um, he was like, I was like, yeah, whatever. I went down. I'm like, you good? I was all pissed off because I had to throw some hands and stuff like yeah. that. And he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And it ended up being a chimney fire. He ended up dying in that the entire house was encapsulated. And I never told this story either, but man, that's the first time I saw a dead body was like, I had to identify that guy basically based off his like facial structure and his bones. Did you, did you feel partly responsible for that? Or did you, how did you ever uh, come to, come to I was like, that? at the time, yeah. This is crazy, man. This is stuff we this, I, the, we haven't even had conversations this is, about. This is, the, this is the story that like uh, we haven't had a conversation, Kev. I've never had this conversation. There's maybe there's one there's may, two people in this world that even know anything yeah. about that. So it's like because I don't mean to come off all hood. Yeah. I mean to I mean to come off as a um, someone that stands on their own too, uh, and is well read and uh, personable. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to come that's, off as this. That's a hundred percent the reason I wanted to do this. Uh, even though Josh is the host of this show, I wanted to interview him uh, just like I do with the self-portraits is because I think if we can tell your story and that's the credibility why you are able to ask other people their stories um, of all the guests that we have. Yeah. And I'm learning uh, a lot about you, even though we've spent a lot of time together over the summer getting ready for this podcast. Um, but all these crazy things... Um, I, I get it. I, I really do because, yeah. like I said, even though people 
have different backgrounds, different ethnicities, the struggle is the same. Absolutely. The struggle is absolutely the same. Um, That's what happens to us. And that's, capitalism is a broken system, but it's the best one we have. Yeah. So I don't mean to, I mean, that system puts many people from many different situations Mm -hmm. and races and ethnicities in similar situations. Right. And that's why hustlers, you know, that's how we gravitated toward uh, together. That's how self hire became the family. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of people grow up in these uh, very broken environments, uh, very dangerous environments or very broken um, social economic uh, circumstances some people don't break that cycle in their psychology and some people will excel way beyond someone who's had better circumstances mm-hmm. that's just the fact and that's the reality because you see so many stories of where people come from very dire circumstances and shoot for the stars uh, and then you see people who just continue the same pattern of drug abuse domestic violence um, crime yeah Uh, so what do you think separated you to know hey i don't want to go back to that and i'm going to just throw caution to the wind and just go uh the second part to that question is uh when you when you graduate from high school when do you decide to come to the vancouver city or is that because of basketball that you were able to do that right right well um the first part of your question is like, I was really bitter for a long time. And a lot of people, that bitterness turns them into, you know, drug addicts and criminals and all that stuff. And um, first off, give credit where credit's due. So Hornby is a beautiful place. It was a very ugly place. I, it's a place I have a hard time going back to today. Um, because of some of the emotional ties that come with that. Um, but Hornby is a very beautiful place with very beautiful people. Um, what separated me, maybe you could say was some something that was different psychologically. The way I looked at the world, the way I looked at hard work, the way I looked at discipline. Um, I don't think it's any of those things, or maybe that's sprinkled in there. But um, there's a couple of families that really took me in, in um really hard hard times in my life where i couldn't go home or i didn't have anything to do or to eat or and um i mean that's the savoy family Alyssa fortune um that's the mckenzie family um parker um bethany savannah i mean these guys really like saved my life uh, in every aspect because you're so people don't understand you're so malleable as a young person that like you don't understand how truly harmful um, not having a family is that's why that's why these people grow up to be criminals and drug addicted people or uh, grow up to have terrible social uh, economic situations is because we trust is something we never developed like w- rules are not something we abide by we think about survival we don't think about betterment of society get the fuck out of here yeah i'm trying to eat yeah so when you're it, busy trying to just get by every day you it doesn't really have it doesn't it doesn't matter any aspiration it doesn't matter outside of that. it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all so I mean, those families, whether it was just, okay, yeah, you're going to come stay with us for a couple of days or, um, yeah, this is what a Thanksgiving dinner is. That was crazy to me. You've never had one before No, of that, course right? not. Yeah. So, I mean, it was those families that kind of opened my mind up into what's uh, a family, what is love, what is trust. Um, to this day, you know, those things are still, that concept is hard for me to work with, yeah. but that planted it and that gave me something to go from and go with. So, I mean, you could say it's that, I mean, on a personal side, I was just, I was mad in a sense, but people, I just remember like my teacher just being like, listen, you know, it's great that you're, I don't know, playing basketball or it's great that you're, I was really into poetry as a kid. I would write like crazy. I had, I could see that. Yeah. I was very creative and, and people liked that. And uh, I grew up in a creative community and I I loved words. So I went with that and, and they're like, you know what? It's great that you're using this as an outlet because when people come up in situations, you know how adults are with kids, they just, they don't say shit. They just allude to shit. They're like, you know, people come up in situations where things aren't the best and a lot of them go down a really bad way. And some, a couple of them go up a really good way. And, uh, and I just, 
that's what made things binary for me. So it's not like, it's just, this is the wrong way to look at things. I, I don't even advise people to look at uh, life this way, but it was just like, there's absolute failure and demise or there's absolute success. There's no in between. So every one of your, so you every one of your actions, middle ground. every one of your actions, every, every time of the day, that's why, I mean, you, as we listen to this podcast and as we grow and develop, you guys will understand I'm a little bit different in the way I approach things and the way I learn, but it's like every little thing in life, either you're doing it the right way or the wrong way and you're building habits. So like Larry Bird, that's something yeah. basketball taught me. Yeah. Listen, I don't know if things he said, he said, I don't know if things are going to work out or how good I will be or how good I won't be. But I just know if I dominate and give a hundred percent to everything that's in front of me, then it's, it's going to work out the best it possibly can. Mm-hmm. So that was my approach early. Yeah. And it was like that, that created discipline, discipline created freedom. And then because I had freedom early, financial freedom, discipline to work 60 hours a week as a 13 year old, that created financial freedom, which then gave me um, time to be creative, which then expanded everything. That's what gave me an opportunity to play basketball. So it's just, it was discipline from an early age, not because someone disciplined me because there's just no choice. When you're, when you're faced in a situation where you have a terrible, terrible, terrible option situation or a slim chance of hope, it's not a choice for you. And then that mind state reflects onto everything you do in life. How do you you brush your teeth every day? Because that's, that's, that's what it programmed me to do. I never had a parent being like, brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. It was like, okay, either I'm going to be lazy or I'm going to be disciplined. And those two things are like, that's what's going to determine my future and whether or not I can get out. So that's it. That, that, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. So it's just every second of every day, every subtask of every task has to be done perfectly. Because if it's not, that's just a gradual progression of shit. And that, because I'm already so far behind, I have to um, be so much better. That was the other thing too. Um, Dre put it in that Compton album. I don't even know who said it. <coughs> excuse me i don't even know who said it but it was a it was a sample of a speech where he's like um i just always grew up to you know to be as good as the next man i have to work harder than the next man and to be better than the next man i have to kill mm-hmm. so i was competitive from an early age and i knew coming from hornby and come from my situation i was 10 steps behind yeah so it's like no choice yeah and that's to this day it's like, I mean, I'm studying right now. I'm in, I'm in work right now. I'm in the workforce right now. It's like, listen, I know because I came up different that I didn't develop the skills I should have right now. It's the only way for me to work, work through that is to outwork everybody, period. And that's the only way. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's the right kind of mind, mindset because so many of uh, the greatest of anything you hear about usually come with some sort of handicap in life right yeah. so and, and usually um and if you ever read a uh, mastery by robert green okay yeah. and he goes through all the people in history from uh <coughs> fighter pilots to uh freddie roach the uh, hall of fame boxing trainer to uh tony robbins to Everybody in that book had some sort of handicap and it forced them to just excel because they felt they were so far behind that they needed to just work extra hard, not only to catch up, but if they wanted to be ahead, the work ethic had to be insane and the mindset had to be uh, 10, 10 levels above 100%. What, what's expected of a normal person. Uh, so when, at what point do you go to Europe? first yeah sorry part two of that question was how do i end up here um fast forward through all that and that's just that's from six from 16 17 on before earlier i pretty much blank out like i mean in my history basically what happened was i ended up getting that place in courting when i was 14 that didn't work out i went to the coach i was like listen coach i can't play um i have to go back to court i i didn't say i can't play i said when I was in grade 10, I had an opportunity to play on the senior team. So if anyone from athletics, if you get an opportunity to play up, if you're one of the top players, you, you take it, you jump on it. And I couldn't make those practices. 
because I had to move back to Hornby because I didn't have the money to live in Courtney anymore. Right. And so, because frankly, I just, I ran out of cash. I didn't really have much cash to start with. And so basically I said, coach, I can't play. Is there any way I can just play and be on the team and make like two practices a week? I know I won't be able to play the games and that sucks, but like, I just want to be part of it. Um, and I don't want to take a step backwards cause I'm limited. And he's like, nah, Josh, I don't know if we can do this. Um, but you know, just give me a day. Let me think about it. And next day I'm in the gym right after school, just getting up shots. And, uh, this woman who, uh, was the history teacher there, uh, this big German lady named Heidi Zirkel, uh, came up and was like, Hey, super casual. She was like the meanest teacher. And I was always like, I was always like, yo, I'm not, I don't yeah. want to get in that class. You know what I mean? Cause she's yeah. super strict, yeah. big woman, like not big as in big, big as in like tall, strong, you, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and she would in anyway, so I was always super intimidated and she was just like, Hey, um, I heard you're trying to play senior and, uh, I heard that you can't play because you live on Hornby. Um, do you want to come live with me for the rest of the year? Okay. <laughs> How did you take that? I had no, that was the most foreign concept ever. Yeah. Um, it ended up. Because that sounds inappropriate. To it, it just was like, no. A regular student. <laughs> it was like, person, no. Yeah. It was like, I don't want to live, live with you. Like, what the hell? Like, uh, I'm fine. I'm good. Thank you. I'm, I'm good. I'm hanging out. But it was like, I was like, oh my God, like, thank you. Um, I don't know. Let me think about it. And I just went home. I was like, this is what I need to do to play basketball. And it, it ended up being completely different. She's basically my foster mom. She's basically yeah. my real mom to this day. Wow. Yeah. If, like she took so me in a hundred percent touch with her a hundred percent. So okay. that's, that's crazy. That's that, a, that's a movie. Man. There that's was like, there was two that's things. Like Michelle man. Pfeiffer and dangerous minds or something. Literally. So, so he never, he's never said this to this day, yeah. but he, my coach orchestrated that behind the scenes a hundred percent. And he knows that I was coming from a little bit of a different disenfranchised situation. And, yeah. and it, it was no secret amongst the teachers because the way that, I mean, at least the way the education system was back then was like, if you, I was at risk, I was an at risk youth. So I was in the system, I was in the social justice system, um, uh, ministry of family and care from a very young age. And so the school uh, gets informed of that. Right. Um, so everyone's in the loop basically. Um, and so he knew kind of my background a little bit. We had never talked personally about it. He just knew I was coming from a bad place. Yeah. He and always alluded. like he, you said. Yeah, exactly. And so he, he set that up behind the scenes and I thank him to this day. Um, and so she came. So the next day I was like, you know, I went to, I said, you know, if you would welcome me into your home, I would be, you know, forever grateful. And so stayed there that year, that year ended. My mom was pissed. My dad was pissed because it was like, you're giving up on this family. You're giving up. And I was like, family, bitch, <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not like that. I'm like, listen, I'm going and chasing something. So if you're either yeah. with that or you're not, and if you're not with it, I don't care because yeah. if you're not with it, I'm just going to go to, I'm just going to go to the justice minister and, and let them know what the fuck's going on yeah. here. And you're going to be shut down anyways. Yeah. So it's like, if the government knows, like I used to lie to the government all the time, like the, you know, social worker comes to your house, you're doing da, 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 this yeah. is having a beating you, da, da, da. Ah, everything's good. And they'd always go away. Cause I don't want to get taken yeah. from my mom. I was like, listen, either you're okay with it. And if you're not okay with it, then guess what? All I'm going to do is just let them know what's really going on. And you're going to be out here. You might even be thrown in jail. So like, what's your point? So she was pissed and, um, I ended up staying there for grade 10, 11 and 12 year. And even when I went to Europe, I came back, I stay there. I go back there for Christmas to this day. So you went to Europe because of basketball. So because of basketball, that was skip over that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was that Kev, listen, it was that. And really when I went home that night after she had, um, uh, after she had extended that to me, I had a girlfriend at the time. I was, I literally, as much as I said, maybe we're a little bit behind in terms of like our social skills. That wasn't the case so much with me. So I, I always got along really well socially and, and, uh, with girls or whatever. Right. So I actually had a girlfriend at the time. Um, and, she she was like Josh because I was all in my ego. When you're 15, 14, you're in your ego. You don't understand anything. You're just working instinctually. You don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. You just everything's about pride and it's about status and all this bullshit, right? And she's like, now nah, listen, like you have an opportunity, take it. Like it, for me, it was like I'm gonna make it on my own, 100% alone. I don't want any help from anybody at any time, right? I don't want that. I don't listen. I don't want my story to be, oh yeah, like he had it tough. And then all of a sudden he just, you know, boom, got into this house and everything was good. It was all Gucci. I was like, no, I want this. I want to struggle through this. And she was like, um, 
Joss, take it. And she was the reason my grades flipped around. She came home every, she was like, cause she come to my house, right? Cause it yeah. was like my house. It was cool. Yeah. <laughs> she would come to my house and, and she'd be like, I got an A in English, got an A in math, got an A in this, got an A in that. Yeah. And I was like, in my back, I was like, oh, that's great. I was like, fuck you. And that's the only reason I ever tried at school yeah. I, on God from grade nine to grade 12. She was the only reason I ever tried in school. Cause I just hated. She wasn't so naturally smart. She came from a really good background. Yeah. Um, athletic all that stuff and she was just like oh man i know you got an 86 and like i know i got an 83 but i'm gonna get that 89 wow. or whatever it is you know what i mean just competitive she built into she you. won that battle i'm still pissed yeah. to this day listen english 12 we end up in the same fucking course same teacher same class everything there's like 20 english 12 classes we end up in the same one we go through i do all the bonus exercises i'm so mad about this to this day she fucking beat me this match i went does not hold stop, up man. she went up is- she went she went we did Savage. all the bonus because because we were together for like uh two three years in high school she did all the bonus okay all the bonus um so we were at like 110 percent each exact same mark so we did perfect on all the assignments oh, we got along real well with the teacher you know what i mean <laughs> and um and so she did all the bonus got 100 percent. i did all the bonus got 100 percent. we killed that class obviously i like words i'm good at english i'm not the math type and uh, we go into the final exam she goes into her final exam she gets 89 on her exam i get 86 she passes so now on the total grade we're both because that's like a big weighting total grade we're both at like 97 percent like exact same grade end of the year she end up getting the fucking english 12 award beats me Anyways, that's she, the only reason yeah. I ever tried at school, and she fucking won, yeah, and I'm still mad at this day. I don't want to play nothing with you. <laughs> I just, he still remembers. Uh, he yeah. still remembers a, uh, a grade twelve. I had, uh, shout out her man. English She's uh, she did. Uh, I leave her name out of it, but she did a lot. She did a lot Damn. for me, man. Anyways, yeah. So to loop to loop back um, to the second part of your question, which I've skipped twice. That's a now. lot of heavy stuff in you unpack um, there too. But um, yeah, so basically, um, I ended up. Um, I wasn't paid to play. They just basically paid my entire way to go to Europe for a year and uh, study at this academy, which is basically uh, in Denmark, which is basically just, we, we train three times a day. Everything else is recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so injury prevention and we, our meal plans. It was the first like serious athlete institute that I ever yeah. went to. Um, was it, wasn't that a big shock or a big change for you having to come from a small oh, environment man. like that and such a like, uh, horrific kind of upbringing almost and then be sh- just traveling across where i haven't even been to europe you know what i mean and yeah. uh, a lot of people haven't and for you to get that opportunity isn't it still it was a trippy crazy man journey? it was like um everything for me i have so much joy in my head and my heart because it's like everything is from that tiny little room on, in Horn, on hornby so like everything is from there so it's just like from that little spot to this athlete institute in denmark was just like fuck this is crazy yeah. but dude my mind state that got me out of or got me out and through high school was totally to my detriment in denmark so i was at that point I was so immersed in basketball culture and it's all grind, work your ass off. Um, uh, talent beats hard or sorry, hard work, hard work beats talent when talent fails to work work hard, hard. all that type of stuff. Like that's how in it is. Like I know these quotes off the top of my head. That's how in it it is in me. And so I was so to that and I was so individualistic, not in a selfish way, but it was just like, I'm here. Like I'm so here. Tunnel vision. You can't fuck me in any way because yeah. I need to work eight times harder than you with this one thing. So I'm here. You can't mess with me. So when I went to Denmark, I, I was so I was so uncomfortable my entire life. And I had become comfortable being uncomfortable. Which mm-hmm. if you're if you have read any self help book or if you're any type of motivator guy or any type of athlete, that's what you strive for. Those points in the workout where you just want to fucking die and you just want to quit right there. You embrace that, right? You're comfortable being uncomfortable. That worked to my detriment in Denmark because of the culture I was put in. So let me explain. So Denmark is a very different culture. They're about community, empowerment, loving. They have this word that doesn't even exist in uh, English. It's called hygge. H Y G G E. I'm murdering that word. Okay. Uh, they say it with their throat. Hygge, basically. Hygge. I don't know. 
Um, my Danish accent's terrible now, but correct me if I'm wrong. Denmark got the title for happiest place. Happiest in place. place in the world. Yeah, a couple right. years, couple years straight. Um, they're yeah. in the top one or two now. So um, they're all about community. I would isolate myself for workouts for everything if i wasn't like working out i was like studying game tape or i was studying plays or i was uh just doing ice and rest and recovery or i was in the gym like it was just like i'm 1000 percent here and i'm here for a fucking reason i'm here in my mind kev the thing is, is like listen i was getting division i i had a couple division one looks not scholarship offers wow looks not offers there's a difference right yeah. and i had couple division two scholarship offers so i was like okay hey, i'm not good enough to get a division one scholarship I had a couple letters, had a couple workouts, went down to the States a couple times, but no one was offering for me and I couldn't pay for school. So school, it was either, it was either ball and college education or like go work at the restaurant type thing. So I was like, listen, I'm here because I need to get a college education. So I got a scholarship and they're paying everything for me here, which is amazing, mm -hmm. but I need to 100, 1000% focus all my resources here and not on you guys fucking around. Now this academy was for like 17, 18 year olds. So yeah. like that's, you know, you know, you're doing your 17 year, you fuck around yeah. a lot, right? And a lot of these kids, it was the first time they've been away from their parents, yeah. right? They're at like a- So everybody's just wilding up. Everyone's wilding 24 yeah. seven. And listen, man, in Denmark, like, there's no such thing as a personal bubble. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they're wow. very, they wild in a different way. And so different culture, different culture, culture, culture. different culture. And so, man, people looked at me like, I don't want to, especially wanna, being yeah. from where you're from and being so isolated all your life. So that's the thing. And I, and I embraced it. So I was like, Oh, you guys like everyone's like, Hey, come, come hang yeah. out. Come do this. Don't go train. You yeah. know, like come like, so we already, had, we already had practice. Why yeah. are you going back to the gym? You well, wanted to be why are you shooting? opposite, right? You and I was like, no, no, no. I, I need to get my 500 makes in type yeah. thing. And so they're like, well, at the first it was all like, Oh, you know, come in and try to draw them away from that drama. I swear to God, man, some of the uh, counselors and coaches had meetings about it. Like what the fuck is up with Joss? Yeah. And um, I was just in a different, cause I was with another Canadian anyway. So it was like, I was so in a different zone. Their whole thing was be comfortable being comfortable. I wanted to be comfortable, yeah. you know, when you spend all your time being uncomfortable. That's what I'm saying. Like, man, I swear to God on my IG right now, I never delete anything from my IG. So you go back to 2013, 2012, 2013, sorry. And it's there. And it's, I have a post about it. Listen, man, being like Denmark is crazy. I can't be comfortable being comfortable. This is not what I want type thing. And so, I went there and I went through that year. I actually, unfortunately, me and my, my girlfriend from high school broke up. Um, and I started dating this girl from Romania. So the academy I was at was for basketball and uh, soccer, football, as they say. They have one recruit, one recruit. So, and she was, she's Romanian. Hard motherfuckers out there in Romania, bro. Yeah. Hard motherfuckers out there in Romania. So she was the exact same way. Yeah. And, uh, she hated me for a couple months, but I was like, yo, this girl's so cool. She's the only girl to this day I've, I've ever seen work harder than me consistently. Yeah. Like she, I was in the gym like five hours a day. She was in the gym seven hours a day. Yeah. Cause she was fighting for a professional She's contract. Built, built the same as you. Built the exact same way. Yeah. And so uh, we ended up dating for a year. She's amazing, but it's just like that. Um, we still keep in contact. She's awesome. But it was just like, that's what built me and my mind frame. And so when I came back to Vancouver, I tore my ACL twice came back to UVic, couldn't play, went to school, went to business school. Only reason I had good enough grades is because I was competitive with that girl, right? So there's yeah. overlying themes here. Went back, went to UVic, went to business school. One year, dropped out because I, I question everything. As you guys will learn about me in this podcast, I question everything. And nothing no, is and as it exactly seems. That's exactly why you're, at, you're the host so, of this podcast. And I, and I will look professors in the eye and say, you're full of shit. And I was full of shit because you don't know anything yeah. as a first year, Young, but I, I thought that I did, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and I, I know that now as much as I, oh, I have this base of knowledge. I don't know shit. I'm too young to know shit. Mm -hmm. So I went back and then um, my old basketball coach turns out running. He runs a um, ethical investment firm, socially responsible investing. So I'm from Hornby. I'm completely on that ethical tip. That's like, to me, big business is evil. I want to come back. Well, it's evil in a sense. That's a huge generalization. I want to, I want to be part of business. I want to be part of wealth, wealth management. The finance is still an underlying theme. I'm still trying to get money. I still have that, yeah. that, that, the survival survival. Instinct, I'm still, yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay. Investment bankers are rich. Yeah. 
let's go get rich. Oh, we can help the world at the same time? Fuck yeah, I'm in. Oh, and I can drop out of school, which if I go to into another year, I'll have to go into debt, which is like my worst nightmare. Yeah. So I was like, oh no, this worked perfect sense. So I dropped out of college, percent. started working, and I uh, worked there for a year, coached my, my uh, local team that I came up at just a couple years after I was done. Still not able to play basketball, had to get the surgery, two surgeries, still have issues type thing. And I was like, listen, I played to my strengths. I was like, listen, I know I'm a better bat, a better a communicator than I am player. My, my old coach, same guy that got me the foster home, said, listen, Joss, you can go down this route and you can play college. You, you might even be able to play professional if you really grind, like I've seen you grind for your entire life, but you're never gonna be as successful as if you change your route and go on what your gift is. And I'm like, the fuck? I don't have a gift. Like, man, I don't have a gift. Like, my entire life has been not having gifts. And that's what my gift is, is that I just know I don't, I'm not talented at shit, so I better work hard. Yeah. And he's like, no, nah, that's, that's exactly your gift. Your gift is in communication. Come coach with me. And that's when I started coaching, which led to me coming to Vancouver. So I went, I worked at this wealth management firm as an assistant, basically an intern. In Vancouver? No, 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 on Courtney. So I went on back Courtney to my hometown. Still, yeah. I took a step backwards. I went back. I was humbled. Did I, you want to leave the island altogether at this time? Absolutely. Okay. Because that's how it goes. You, you the get big off, city you get off Hornby, yeah. you get to Courtney. Okay, now I'm in Courtney. Yeah. Okay, now I get, so to, close. I, I get to Denmark. Yeah. Okay, wow, now I'm in Europe. Yeah. Then I get back. Oh, I'm in Victoria still, yeah. a big city though. I'm yeah. liking it. Oh, now I got to go back to fucking Courtney? Oh my yeah. God, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. I went back to Courtney, worked at that firm, a, a sub-branch of a bigger firm that's headquarters here in Vancouver. And... Uh, Started from an internship, worked my way up to assistant type thing. Same thing with the same, dishwashing. Same grind, same grind. And um, on the ethical tip, developed a great relationship there. And then because of my coaching, I had reached out and uh, been brought up, uh, brought into the Vancouver Basketball Academy, uh, which is a brand that's grown from a local grassroots brand now to training, you know, Carmelo Anthony, Carlos Boozer, uh, D'Angelo Russell, um, CJ McCollum, biggest names in basketball. Um, and so I went and, and worked with them on a grassroots level and landed a contract uh, basically in basketball, started to work in basketball. And that's how I ended up in Vancouver. But that was all based off of my coach just being like, hey, listen, stop it. Don't play yourself. In the words of DJ yeah. Khaled, don't play yourself. Like, look at yourself, look inwardly, get your ego out of the way. What are you good at, Joss? Because you're not good at basketball. You're good at basketball because you're skilled, because you put time in. You're not talented. You don't have an ounce of talent in your body. This, is, this, this sport is not for you. Wow. You just have insane passion at it. Yeah. What you are talented at is communication. You can coach the hell out of kids. Camps, big groups, small groups, one-on-one. I've been in the gym with NBA guys. So it's just like, listen, stop, like grow up. Don't, don't, don't lose your dream, but be smart, right? Change your trajectory, so I took his advice. I took the hit in my ego because that was my entire goal was play yeah. college. Now, I, I did play post-secondary, which was amazing. And I played on a very high level, but it didn't matter. I played on a higher level than whatever level I would have played at here in, yeah. in Canada. So I came to Vancouver, did that for a year. I got the call this last December. Hey, Joss, listen, um, we need you to come back, basically. And it was, we had developed such a great relationship, an advisor-assistant relationship where he wanted me to continue on his brand, continue on his business. So I've been in school the entire time, um, getting certified. Um, and so he was like, listen, you know, it's, it's time for me to integrate you a little bit into the business and we can take this a little bit bigger. And so um, after working for a year in basketball in Vancouver, doing private sessions, running organizations, pop-up events, organizational startup, complete entrepreneurial mindset with some great fucking people, let me add that in there too. Um, there's some amazing people at that organization and that organization is still going to go to the stars. Um, I have no doubt at all in my mind. Yeah. Uh, great kids, great, um, parents, great facilities, great coaching methodologies taught me so much about what I know in basketball today. Move back, continue. I didn't move back, excuse me, transfer back to working here in Vancouver at the main office um, in a, an increased role so we can start to transition and go take it to a higher level. Um, and that's how I ended up in Vancouver, but it was all off a of hustle. It was all off of like yeah, taking your ego out. I remember you telling me you came to Vancouver to work for free at first. It, nothing's handed in this world, my man. Oh, no, for sure. Nothing's handed in this world. I so like it was, the, I like hearing these it, stories. It was like, um, 
they have a bunch of outfits. So they have uh, VancouverBasketball.com. They have uh, the Academy, the Vancouver Basketball Academy. Um, they also have Metro League. So we were running a we were running a full scale men, uh, men's league, which is the best in the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, VancouverBasketball.com, which is like a lifestyle balls life type thing for Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, best basketball blog outfit in the nation yeah. hands down um Facts. and then and, and then we were running um uh, a youth academy basically so to speak and and, and training kids and, and caring um more than anybody else and so that was the most amazing part but those are some of them. we had a lot of great connections with nike and that kind of blew up over the time i was there not due to me probably just due to good timing uh, we went from just youth academy to nba guys but I had to work for free, man, like 100%. It wasn't like, yeah, like you come in on a little probationary period, see how you do. And so they threw me in a million and one situations where I was not equipped to do any of it, <laughs> whether that's writing or whether that's organizational booking gyms, whether that's being on court with players that are frankly better than you yeah. or um, running large scale camps that and that whole organization is held to a certain level of excellence. So we had to maintain that. And so, I mean, that helped me so much in everything. But again, guys, you can't just walk into positions and get paid. Like, think about this. I came to Vancouver with X amount of dollars in my pocket. And by the time I was through that, I was definitely in the negative. And that, so there's no money involved. Like, yes, I was getting paid, but like compared to expenses and how everything was working out, like. It was like almost just a, just a I was little, not, little yeah, tip. I was not, you know what I mean? Really getting paid. Um, and that's not to discredit the organization. That's just to say, earn your fucking stripes. Yeah. Be, be battle tested. And so that helped me so much in everything that I do today. And, and that was a, you know, a great period of my life, which has led me to all this success that I've had post that. Mm-hmm. And it's just luck. That's another And so thing. you go from that and you leave the academy to start working in wealth management again. Is that correct? Yeah. So same firm, um, same firm. And again, it was not, nothing's handed, nothing's handed. And I like it that way. So I, I had to come back. But my connection was um, on Vancouver Island. So I still had to go through the exact same. I came in, I interviewed for a position, which I'm at now, which requires a college degree um, and experience in the industry. Yeah. I have neither of those. I have a little bit experience. of experience, yeah. kind of, and I had no college degree. And I'm younger than everyone. Tell else. me, you talked your way into it because if that, you say that, I'll, you're my G, dude. That's the only way you have. That's the only talk way you have to do way, it. So talk they, way. they were, they were. Um, I was lucky enough to get an interview, mm-hmm. and then get two rounds of interviews, and then you come in and all right, we'll give you a shot. We're going to pay you less than everybody else. You got to work your way up. See, some people, <laughs> some people, I know you for sure, and then me. Some people will listen to that and be like hell no like i'm worth more than that but some people like me and you might listen to that and be like big smile on face because that just means perfect that means your eyes are on me perfect and i have to prove myself i I couldn't have said it better myself i I get high on that kind of stuff man it's like oh so now i have your attention and now you're watching me yeah perfect just wait yeah. Just wait. So that's what happened. And, you know, I continue to go down my educational path and continue to work yeah. up the ranks there. And that goes back to a bigger theme. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, prove, prove yourself. A lot of people, actually, I'm just going to jump back real quick. A lot of people don't want to. So we have a big thing of entitlement. And I saw that a lot in training. We don't. With athletes. With athletes. Oh, um, I'm, I, I deserve a starting spot. Bitch, no, you don't. Like you deserve a starting spot once I see you in here day and night for, you know, an entire year before the the season starts, then you deserve a starting spot. That's how I got my starting spot. So it's just like in, in business, oh, you're only going to pay me X amount, which is half of what other guy over there is making. Because again, I'm coming in from a disenfranchised situation where, um, I don't have what I need. So I have to earn my spot. So don't take the entitled route. Entitlement is poison. Entitlement is poison. You don't deserve shit in this world. There's kids in Haiti right now, right? With no fucking parents, no no food. They're out there hustling every day, begging on the street. Are they entitled to anything? And why are you entitled to so much more than them? Mm-hmm. Entitlement is poison. So stop it, right? Ladies and gentlemen, entitlement is poison. So talk that. Don't don't go into that trap. Rather than that. Say, okay, no, 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 this is perfect. Like you just said, eyes are on me now. So what does eyes mean? What do eyeballs mean? Eyeballs mean leverage. 
So I can, if I work hard and if I show and prove my worth, I can leverage that into a situation where I can win and succeed more than anybody else at my age. And so that's what you have to do. Don't take that as a, um, oh, fuck these guys. These guys only think I'm worth, you know, $30,000 a year. Fuck Mm. these guys. I'm worth way more than that. I'm going to quit this job. No, no, no. Mm. Take that double up. Take that double up. Have an entrepreneurial mindset. Oh, 30 K. I'm going to give you $60,000 in value. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, I, and then let's then, thousand, then let's then let's re, I, renegotiate. You know, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps when you say that right now because wholeheartedly I can say, from the time I was knocking on those doors, selling bread to our neighbors, from the time I was doing extracurricular activities outside with the homies, right? I always, and to the time I started washing dishes at Arby's. Stocking shelves that save on foods. Oh man! Working in the gym, training people for free, um, to even now with self-hired everything, I always, always thought in my head I'm being paid an ex- substantial uh, million-dollar contract, and that's how I look at everything. Damn. Because if you go into it with that mindset, you're not entitled and. Everything that happens is in your control because mm-hmm. if you're being paid that amount of money to wake up every morning, you will wake up. 100%. And eventually, the only thing that separates you from that is the time because yeah. it, it will happen because you're acting, you're behaving in a way of someone who's worthy of that. 100%. And I've always done that. And uh, one of the things I always like to say is the cream will always rise to the top, baby. It will. The cream will always rise to the top. And yeah. I get goosebumps when you say that because uh, there's so many times where you have thought, like, I'm not saying like we're Superman, like we just wake up and feel like this 24 hours of the day. Hell there's no. times where you're like, man, there was times I was doing these milk crates that save on foods. So I'm like, fuck, man, what the <laughs> fuck am I doing? <laughs> you yeah, know, I, yeah. and I'll be even more honest. I have friends that were out there doing these extracurricular activities and they were making way more way problem. more money. They were showing up in nice cars and they're eating at restaurants, they're eating fast food all day. They're chilling. They yeah. look like they're chilling. I'm yeah. here mopping the, f- the spilt milk on the floor and shit, busting my ass. And and then those times he's like, This is I'm way better than this. But because you work so hard, because you come in with the right attitude people notice mm-hmm. right and if whatever you want to call it the universe what is it might Law sound of attraction goofy, goofy, all that stuff yeah. puffy puffy but um it it, it works man and it does. You, you've i've always been able to say i'm never like i get promoted at every job promoted for this and that but every place i go people eventually take rise to the top might not take a liking to the kind of person you are or or they might just not like you but they can recognize and they can respect the work they can respect you because and they know you're a reliable person Mm -hmm. and that's the same thing with the self-hired thing is man we came into it like we came into it not knowing like they never offered me anything right and it was just off of a relationship of uh homies so it to just kind of can i get into my story yeah real quick? loop loop in so, man so hold up well, i gotta ask you because this is something i never asked you how what does self-hired mean so like you know what i mean that's what i was brought in to do actually <laughs> um but i gotta go back a little bit more okay than yeah that. there's a back story. i gotta go okay. a little back more than the back right that. right right because uh a lot of people who don't know self-hired self-hired was originally uh, Kevin Wong's company that he did for uh, a lot of music artists, a lot of rappers uh, in the early, in 2008, I would say, is where it kind of started. Um, but they they also had a shirt that was popping in the streets, man. That, uh, the shirt <laughs> said, listen, you'll get a kick out of this. Right. I have that shirt to this day. The shirt, this is 2008. The shirt said, don't talk about it, be about it. Talk that talk. And it's all fired. And it was just the classic, you, you print print yeah. shirt you know graphic t-shirt yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was hot that's in burnaby. fire <laughs> if you're from burnaby you know exactly what i'm talking that's about what's up. uh and he was doing music videos for all the local rappers and and they this is like before instagram before um, so like youtube just started to pop off ah uh, no no youtube was already youtube popped where off? you went to check for things. shit man oh, but hey. like you didn't have a vancouver rapper that got like hundred thousands of views and things like that right man but the videos he was doing 
was gaining that kind of traction. And this is like way before you could do like sponsored ads or anything. This is all who? organic in the streets, right? Who was popping back then? Oh man, there's lots of guys. T Loke being T-Lo, definitely was T-Lo. one of the main one. Trey Nice. Trey Nice. Uh, Hoodrich. Hill, Hoodrich. Um, Vicky Chan. Oh. <laughs> so all these guys, like I, I've seen, because then, yeah. you know, everyone from Vancouver always was waiting and still waiting for that, the one. Still. And so self hired was kind of the media outlet i guess right together so everyone kind of knew the thing is i knew all these guys from the neighborhood like right. these they're a little bit older not that much older than me but i knew all these guys i knew of them from the yeah. neighborhood yeah uh so uh enter my story is i was working at a gym i started working at the gym i became a manager at the gym and then i became a trainer so it's that thing you right same about. thing so, you know you start you start mopping the floors and then you start uh, the next week he's on fries on the, uh, yeah next exactly week, so, next week he's on burgers and then i got i got a little weekend certificate to be a trainer <laughs> Just thought, and they're like you're a little skinny asian kid like what do you know about training but i had the same gift i think you had right communication communication 100%. and people fucked with me because of that right and because i was also um trained by a very very good uh coach who was uh, teach who coached me in Muay Thai, mm. um, but he all, a lot of other things like life skills and sure, all sure, sure, mentor. So, and I had that vibe from him, and I was able to communicate that to other people in the gym. So long story short, I was a trainer, and then I became manager, and then I became uh, almost like their human resources because uh, they started to open up different locations, and the gym was Anytime Fitness. So then he went corporate. Oh, no, it didn't go corporate. That's, that's kind out. of the problem, actually. But he sold out. Yeah, so they opened up a few other locations, and I'm in college at this time because now, right. just like you, I don't want to be everything I get into. I want to be, I want to know the nuances of whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So if it's music, I want to know who is the best MC, yeah. right? Yeah. Who Lyricist, people really respect? Who syllable structures right? the best? If, if it's R and B, I want to know who's really putting out that good R and B, that old school R and B. You know what I mean, R and B. So um, the same thing with training is like I don't want to just read from a magazine. I want to know what the high level people know. So I went to school for that. Right. I, just, I didn't sense. know any Makes better, sense. right? Kines- I was like, kinesiology. Uh, well, f- yes, it was. Kin- it started out just going to school for the sake of going to school, to be yeah. honest. Right. And it's just a lot of the themes of this will come up in the podcast. It's just succumbing to the pressures. Cause I didn't go to school right away after high school. I was, right. I was just outside. Uh, he was outside. He was outside. And then my parents start getting real worried about me. Like, and kept, and come on inside. Uh, come on inside. Stay away from that stuff. Right. So, um, I got a gym at the job. I got a gym at the job. I got a job at the gym. And then, so that kind of kept them off my back. Right. And so the next thing they wanted me to do was go to school because, you know, they saw all my other friends just going down very different paths. And you know what? And it, it's because of that pressure they put on me. It really did save me from a lot of other things. For sure. Might so have done let's, a lot let's of good. shout out them up for that. Yeah. Um, at the time, like, you know, it's just mom, just being mom. You should go to school um, and get your ass and, in class. And so I went to school for kinesiology. I got really good mentors along the way, uh, not only in boxing, but uh, kickbox, not only in kickboxing and boxing, but um, just a lot of different mentors came into my life. Mm, right. Mm, um, mm. And that that kind of just set me on this like self development path. Okay. And that's where you end. Uh, that's where I started reading books. And that's where you end up being so uh, infatuated with learning and and how to like. You can probably hear it in my voice For now. Sure. Like You want? I wanted to talk like a normal person. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, we, yeah. we 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 have like this street talk that we grow up in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Burnaby yeah. Street. You're talk. not really. You're not so, really speaking English. Um, to be able to communicate well, I had to learn. I had to read. I had to do all these things. Expand your vocabulary. And this might sound normal, but it wasn't normal to me. So mm. I did all this in my early 20s. How I many years? So were you like third year kin, the second year kin? Okay, so what, what happened is exactly like you. Uh, very similar to your story. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not very school oriented at all. I'm right. not academic oriented at all. Right. I was very passionate about the subject. I listened to a lot of podcasts about training, about um, the the just the nuances of uh, getting a- athletic performance and this and that. But I was not academically sound. I could not write a paper to save my life. I loved reading. I loved history. I loved everything. I loved reading and doing that. Yeah. Could not write a paper to save my life. On top of that, I'm in survival mode because my parents are not 
well you're off. At the not hustle. even close. Sorry, not well off. We're like you know working class people. Yeah. So um, and thank God that they did this because uh, the choice was student loans, uh, like my sister did. Um, Slippery slope. And this and that. So the choice was student loans or just not go to school. And I was like, no, I could do this all myself. Like, so I went to work. I was working full time at the gym. Fuck school. That's what you thought. You said, I'm out. We're going to get to that. So I was working (laughs) full time. It's going to school. And at some point I decided to uh, move out too. So I moved in with my brother. So now there's rent, there's tuition, food, there's food. And so there was no free time at all, right? And I'm going to school every day and I realized, shit, like I really don't like school, man. I really, Mm. I mean, it's not that I didn't think the teachers, I thought the teachers were great. It's not like, oh, school is bullshit. They don't know shit. It's just like, I really didn't like the process of sitting in a lecture and all that. It was a great experience because you meet people, you learn how to interact with different kind of personalities and stuff. But I was getting something a lot of those guys in classes, kinesiology classes, wasn't getting, uh, weren't getting, sorry, was that real world experience of training people, right? Um, training athletes. I don't even know why these athletes trusted me. It's just, I think I just sounded smart with a lot of words and they just saw me holding pads for people. And yeah. so you, I had you, one yeah. or two guys that were just power lifters, but I was able to explain to them about mobility and certain parts of anatomy and stuff. So they just fuck with me. Damn. And then, so people were like seeing me train like these monstrous guys look like they should be training me. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody wanted to know what's up. Kev's got so, the sorry, juice. So, to, to get to self-hired. Sir, sure. The entire self-hired crew, and when I say crew, is this, this, this group around the guys that actually were the self-hired, the company, right? Yeah. By then, they had expanded their clothing operation, I yeah. think. Um, instead of focusing on music videos, they started making more T-shirts and stuff. And they were they're just generic T-shirts, but they said self-hired. They said all this motivational stuff on it. And it was popping yeah. in the streets, man. Yeah. But all these guys came to the gym, and I knew all these guys from high school. I knew them all from the neighborhood. And they all they all rocked with me because I managed the gym. It was a tiny little gym on uh, close to Edmonds there. Yeah. And they all, they all rocked with me. And uh, so it was almost like a barbershop. So there was a place to talk music. It was a place you. to you know, do everything. And so they seen me train all these guys. And then I'm like, Kev, who is Kevin Wong, who's the producer, co-owner of Self Hired Everything, my homie, my brother. He, he comes up to me. He's like, yo, man, I want to I learn I want to learn pad work. I want to do a little bit of one, two. I want to do some <laughs> boxing classes with you, right? Yeah. So that's how our relationship started. Um, rewind sidebar. Uh, I knew Kev awesome. of Kev in high school. I knew of his whole crew. I knew of everybody. He didn't know. He met me at the gym. But okay, I'm like, right, no, right, you right. actually met me like way before that. I was a little high school kid. And uh, I've said what's up to you a few times, and he's like, "Oh no, I don't." Because oh, yeah, Kevin cool. meets a trillion too cool people. for school yeah, yeah. kind of guy, right? Obviously. Uh, so we had that relationship, and then later on, as the gyms started to expand, they started opening up locations. I kind of just naturally had to do the administration role, mm-hmm. uh, and you know what? I was really bitter at that time because of it. Really? Yeah, because you know you 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 want to be training, you want to be doing the fun stuff, right? That actually made me more money instead of the administration stuff. But they didn't have anyone to do it, and every time we'd hire somebody, it would be like a college kid because you're only paying them just a slightly above minimum wage. Yeah. So you're only gonna get students. Yeah. But they can't. They're only there for a few months. Right. Right. So we kept on losing people, and right. uh, so I filled the, a lot of the shoes for the administration stuff. It makes sense. It uh, makes sense. So by then, so this is how this is how the whole self hire thing. I'm going to bring it all together. Kev was doing the videos for 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 music guys. By then, he was also doing corporate. And okay, so wait, I, wait, hold on. I'm confused. So you said you're you're at Anytime Fitness. You've been training. You worked your way up. All of a sudden, you're training these guys. They're kind of legit now. You're because there's a, a void to fill. You're not going corporate. You're just kind of you're doing the work that needs yeah. to be done. Type thing. Straight. It's things like payroll. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you know what okay, I mean? my bad. My things bad, like my payroll bad. to 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 uh, calling the plumber. All that Cause, stuff. Because yeah. there's uh, washroom issues. Okay. To um, hiring people for other locations. So like managerial, kind of managerial. Okay. Oh man, it was rough. So you're there. You're kind of on bit, top of that. I got to keep up with school. Oh shit. You're still right? in school. So okay, okay. in school at any time fitness really actually kind of starting to run things. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're training this guy named Kevin that you actually know from high school who actually has this brand that's really been popping off. Now this is like 20, 
This is like 2012. This is 2012. So, they, so they're like, whatever. so Cell Fire is like, you know, four, four, four or five years deep. And, yeah, but and, then at that time, I don't think they exactly knew what they were like they were invested into the clothes by them okay okay so, but, so yeah but this is where you're coming from type yeah thing, okay? because the or oh, the aura of what self-hired was uh came mainly because of the the, the music videos and right. all, all the rappers that they were associated with and that was like a street thing like oh uh, self-hired crew. self-hired like, that's the crew that's the fan and they, to, to, you know to this day you know those guys partied hard yeah, like, they go you hard hear about they this, go hard right? so um yeah to to pick up where kevin and me kind of just had our, 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 our relationship as friends I, I, I coached them in boxing but then um i started asking him i said hey man could you help me out and just do some videos for the gym mm. do you know what i mean like as promotion see i was never and you know me like you, what you know me i am not technically sav- savvy at all with social Kevin's media like 40 years old but dude i didn't some- know facebook to anything but i understood he says the thing is i understood branding and i understood content for some reason i understood sure. how to make dope sh- so so you understood the gears behind it yeah i just didn't i just didn't use like i got you i got no, I the got internet you. I got the you. way you're supposed to right. and that was partly the reason that our the, the location that i was at kind of failed because mm. this is then it was already into the social media age right. and we just didn't keep up with that gotcha right because we were so un mad under Staffed, understaffed yeah. and, you know didn't have the manpower for everything because i'm already doing all this stuff so i asked kev i just like got this idea i said listen i got some clients i got some people in the gym who've got crazy stories can we document it in some way and because of our relationship he said listen man i don't know what the budget of the gym is or whatever i'll do it for free man just tell him to like crazy. pay for my pay for your boxing classes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and uh pay for my gym membership I said, I got you 100%. Because I sold it to them like, he's saving us thousands of dollars, blah, blah, blah. Hey, man, those videos are worth thousands of dollars, man. And you could here. still find that if you go to Anytime New West, it was Anytime Edmonds at the time. If you go to Anytime New West and you scroll down, you'll be able to find those videos. That's tight. So he did those videos for us and it, and it was uh, it was hot, man. It was cool. And I, I, I got more high off of the video coming together than the actual purpose of the video to advertise the gym gotcha and i was just so infatuated with whoa man like yeah this is like cool this is like you know it was like we put that together and it's like fun to watch you're creative fast forward uh we moved gyms we moved locations because this wasn't doing well so we moved to a bigger location in new west and then i thought i had another idea i said kev why don't you film me going through while it was under construction and just doing this little thing Okay. And just to kind of let all of our uh, members know that this is what the gym's going to look like. Be patient with us because we had to close that down. And it was like a three-month gap before we yeah. opened the other one. So he filmed that. And it was cool. And, uh, and we just had this like, not only were we uh, good friends, but we just had this also like chemistry in the video as- video production aspect. Right. Creatively, you guys Yeah, and then we just way. gelled. But then by then, we were really close already, right? And then... Um, just all the all of his friends all of his homies like we we all knew each other so we just bonded really well um so now i have to kind of put it into perspective is where i'm already finishing my diploma because what most people do is they do a two-year at a smaller college like langara or douglas then go to and then transfer to ubc i did not have the grades to transfer but that's what i thought i was gonna do right right but now just like you i'm like I paid my entire way through this two. It might not mean a lot to some people, but I paid. Well, it means a lot to you for sure. These two years of school, and I I did it while I had to pay rent. There was a lot of uh, family issues going at home, going on at home. My brother just had two kids. Crazy. And I'm living with them. Um, he had like a kid back to back. Popped um, them out one two. Yeah, so it was crazy. It was like a it was like big house or sorry, bigger family than. So you're not just living room. Probably not a bigger house anymore. Bro, yeah. Um, so all that was going on. And then I had all these bills that I was paying. I was paying everything. You were grinding. I was grinding just like you. I was just grinding. I and, you. you know, I missed out on a lot of things. Like a lot mm. of people were partying at that time. That's why I party so hard now, Josh. <laughs> My man. My <laughs> man. A lot of people were partying My at man. the time. I didn't do any of that. Because, yeah. you know, it was just, and it was just like, oh, it was, I felt like a hamster running a wheel. Mm. And, but inside of me, I had this inclination, like, 
oh, I like this creative stuff, man. Right. I, I really like that. So uh, I make it through the diploma without going into debt, without without any of that. Scott free ish. I go. We move to the new gym, and then we, there's some conflict now because then I, at this point. You know how you said that you come into it knowing that you're going to be paid less and you grind. That's how I came in. But it's right. been five years, my friend. Five years. And we've grown this business. So uh, there's a point when people, you're being There's used. people that are here, and I don't want to sound egotistic or anything. There's people, there's a whole culture of the people at the original gym are there because of me. Right. The clients are there because of me. Right. So let's just kind of just change up our contract a little bit. And just the vibe I was getting from them didn't already in my head. It was like, I don't know if I want to keep going in this, not only this gym or this mm -hmm. business, but in this kind of industry or yeah. this career, because mm -hmm. now I'm starting to have other thoughts of inclinations of oh, creative sides, so self hire. There, right? yeah. So uh, the conflict that I had with them just fueled that. Gotcha. So what I said to them, listen, I just graduated. I need a break. And I talked to Kev about it, and he's just like, he got angry. Oh, for real? He got angry. He's like, man, they do you dirty like that? What the fuck? Da, da, this, oh, and that. And, that. and then I talked to other, a few other people about it, because that, that gym was my life. Man. Right. That, it was like 12-hour days. Five years, man. That was my life. That's crazy. Oh, if ask anybody from, from there, they know that mm -hmm. was my life. They, all they saw me was that. They asked me, do you go home? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um, That's crazy. And you know what? It, it helped me pay through college and it helped me uh, through a lot of things. So I'm not going to downplay what they did for me. And it helped me learn a lot and be in a leadership position at such a young and inexperienced age. Learned a lot, It kind of no made doubt. me who I am today. Yeah. So I just had said, listen, I'm going to bounce for three months. I'm going to go uh, back to, I'm going to go to Vietnam and just chill out. And we can talk when I get back. I get back and we just never have the conversation. Not on their part. I just you didn't you never you never back. reached out yeah yeah they reached I I won't you know and I yeah they I, reached out and I didn't but it was a time and this is what I was gonna ask you is when do you know there's a phase that you're gonna change in your life there's just you know things happen things happen like you know like a they say uh, a, a ship passes in a night right and sometimes you go you pass another ship okay and then you're just you pass right so that's a passing in life and sometimes mm. you meet people and you're friends with people or you have a relationship or you're in a career and that's just one phase in your life a ship passes just, in the night yeah interesting two ships passing in a night ships pass in the night. right and it's just for that time mm. and it was time to move on so i didn't even know what i was going to do for the next Crazy. and just like you i had i had a float i had a little bit of a savings to uh, I had a little bit of savings to get me by, but this is what I, I knew I didn't want. I did right. not want to go to work, like just anywhere. To work, or yeah, yeah. nine to five, be stuck. So kicking self-hard, and remember what you asked me at the beginning of this? You said, what is self-hard? Yeah, so please, to so loop back, what is self-hard? That's what I brought to Kev. I was like, yo, so me, but, so me not going to work, I'm just chilling every day. Right? Living and I'm that chilling life. with Kev. Living that life. Um, no, I mean we're training, we're uh, we're we're kicking it, and then um, I'm doing other things just to support myself, right? Um, just to keep things going, right? Um, yeah, and then I meet all kinds of people, do all kind of different uh, ideas. Traveled. And stuff. He's traveled. Uh, yeah, just just different things. Like there was a little construction thing I did. There's a little. Uh, I worked for a union that was like you work on trade shows, but you don't like you're not employed by the, you're employed. But you're a union member, but you just kind of just go to trade shows and help them set it up. Sure. Great money, though. No, no, no. Cool. Great money. Word, yeah. Just, it wasn't like frequent work, and it wasn't like not something you wanted to do all the time. Yeah, right? yeah. So, I got you. But it was fun, man. This this year and a half, I was just trying different things. So, it was good. So, again, what, so what, in is, that what, year in, and a what half, embodies self-hired? In that year and a half, I thought I was living the quote-unquote self-hired life. Ooh. And this is when I'm Ooh. reading things like Tim Ferriss. This is when I'm reading things like... Uh, uh, Lewis, Howe, or sorry, I'm listening to things like Lewis Howe, School of Greatness. Cool. So you're getting all these 
kind of elements of entrepreneurship. You're so they got beer on boss, things. like four hour work week. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. And you're starting to think about, uh, uh, and then I kind of come across like nomad society where it's these guys who become like nomads because they work off of the internet and kind of things. So I put two and two together. I'm like, listen, I I have a bit of a background in, in, in training people. So I understand psychology a bit. I understand uh content and and kind of things let's see if i could kind of put something together so i go to kev i'm already spending almost like every other day with self right, right and all these guys just chilling right yeah um so i'm like yo we need to do we need to do like video series or something this is a guy who's never been on instagram by the way god damn barely news knows how to use facebook god damn right yep, so yep. i'm going to kev telling him like yo you need to do videos and this <laughs> and that explaining what self-hired is because i know it's not just about being self-employed right yeah yeah. yeah. and he's like he's like okay you be in the video <laughs> sure dude you do it <laughs> yeah that's yeah. exactly how it happened and it's because of our prior relationship doing the gym stuff him doing the promotional videos for the gym stuff and that's yeah. how we got into that okay and then he, that's when he kind of let me into the world of how their uh operation was like so they were in between and this is kind of this is kind of fitting because at that time they were in between a transition of what they want to do with the clothes. Okay, sure. So hold on. Just just for the listeners, timeline here. Where are we at now? So it's past the gym. I think you, this is about 2016. 2016. So you're coming in like, hey, listen, I got an idea. Yeah, this is somewhere in 2016, early 2017. Because oh. 2016, I came back. Yeah, I left the gym around end of 2015. Sure, yeah. So, it was two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so sure. um, 2016, we're kind of just playing with ideas. And... They're going from a transition of where they want their clothes. So you see this hoodie I'm wearing? So their Quite clothes fresh. was just, Quite the, fresh. you know, you print everything on the clothes. So this is only I knew this at the time is they wanted to go what you're wearing. Which is quite beautiful. Which is cut and sew. So the way I understand it or the way I understood it was that that's fashion. Mm. This is streetwear. Mm. You buy this in bulk. You put your brand on it. You embroider it. You print on it. And that's the difference. Right. Cut and sew is patterns. You buy the fabric. It's like fashion. You go yeah. buy the, you feel the fabric, you go buy it, you get a pattern made, and then you make copies mm -hmm. of it. They said, listen, we're going to change our whole thing. And we're going to be not only, because his whole vibe, their whole vibe, Kevin's whole vibe and the self-hired whole vibe was a very Van City oriented thing. Right, right. They fuck with the Vancouver rappers. They fuck with the Vancouver scene the nightlife everything was vancouver so they said our shirt's going to be made in vancouver um everything's going to be made in vancouver that's tight uh so which that is sounded expensive great. though sound it's very expensive mm. it's very it's a big difference anyone who's in clothing understands how i don't know made. i still don't really know the clothing side of everything i understand the business bit and i'm at some of the meetings right but uh that was a kind of key moment because as they're transitioning to this me and Kev, we're talking about ideas to promote all this. And I said, why don't you promote the lifestyle? And the lifestyle was creatives, athletes, entrepreneurs, uh, people who are just motivated to do things, people like yourself. Right. So we wanted to speak to those Go people. Go-getters, right? hustlers, Again, outliers. this is a guy who does not even have an Instagram account, doesn't even have a... Totally like this, not in tune. Not in tune to Facebook and all that, but I, under, I just had this creative mind. Right, dope, and I think dope. Kev vibed with dope, it. Dope. So that one you're watching right there, the one with the boxing and that clip right there. Yeah, that was the first video we put together, and that was a guy I worked with that I did. You can see me doing the pad work with him. That's a clean. right there, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So that was the first video we put it together. It looks cool, super cheesy. If you heard the audio, because it was me on the audio, and I think it's somewhere in the YouTube world. It's, it exists it's somewhere. YouTube. So it was super cheesy, but at the time. That's how we tight. started, right? And and I just got such a high off of it. And mm. I was really about thinking that, hey, I'm getting so much value from the things I learn from all the books I read, the podcasts I listen to. Let's put it in a way that it's, it's understandable or makes sense to people who are kind of street and urban. Right. Let's make the, it digestible. The, 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 the clothing is streetwear, urban, mm. right? Mm. So let's kind of fuse the two worlds it was it was shaky at first we kind of didn't really understand 
we just kind of went with it, right? There's a couple right. of videos that are up there and just me defining what self hard is. And it sounds super cheesy, my <laughs> brother. <laughs> so too. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, we just didn't want people to uh, associate self hard with being self employed. Sure. So, so that was the main focus. And it was just to show this lifestyle of people who are just motivated, people who have jobs, people who don't have jobs, people who are in school, just people who are motivated, who aspire to accomplish or to be more than. Mm. So that's what self hard means and that's what we wanted to portray right so make so put that in a if say what's your elevator pitch what's your twitter caption what's your twitter bio what's your 140 characters and like, oh kev uh you work with that self-hired brand right uh what, what is that well self listen self-hired right now is a media company and a clothing company mm. so and when i say clothing now i say we're in fashion fashion because what you're wearing and what we're going to continue to produce is high quality, high end pieces that you're going to find in the stores a little bit on the, the premium that, side. Yeah. The price that is above what our previous competitors. Yeah, no, sure. um, what I mean is previous uh, uh, products Got that you. they used to put out. Right. Well, I, and yeah. they might, they might still do that. I don't really know what the, I know what the future the next few quarters are sure right but i mean you 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 get what you pay for so exactly. like this it, exactly. this is premium like it's not just oh yeah let's um let's take a uh, bulk put our shit on it and do our little yeah. embroidered exactly. and then and then charge 99 dollars for it no no like this is the nicest t-shirt i own like i have it's again 95 percent organic cotton spandex bamboo like it's super sexy it's form-fitting right everything yeah. it's the details are immaculate and man th listen i'm either at work uh, working in finance or I'm in a gym uh, or on court working with players the one time a week when I go out bet I'm wearing some fucking yeah. self hire gear because it's just the nicest shit I have it's clean cut premium and it, it it's clean cut and it's grown up as the people who are a part of this movement have grown up so the the aesthetics had to change right so is the so is the content that we produced right, right. it's more mature so it has to change because because we change, right? Change, and it's yeah. it's more authentic to and genuine to who we are. Beautiful. That's such a beautiful thing, man. And growth is a beautiful right. thing. And, and so I just want to speak, not to cut you off, Josh, but to speak to how all this came about with your story and our story is that um, on the media side of things, we kind of just had a lot of ideas thrown at the wall and they didn't always kind of stick. They didn't always make sense once we made it. Like for you and me to be sitting in this podcast, this podcast was an idea that we had in 2016 mm. and it, it didn't come to fruition until now. Crazy. Until we've met you and we've gone together put the and, pieces and together. put the pieces together. We've had three shows, three ideas for shows before we even filmed this one. So, and we filmed a couple of them first. First, we had this <laughs> other thing, which is an idea that we had, but I, I didn't realize a lot of people already d did it. Like, um, sorry, what's one buddy from Cypress Hill? Uh, be real be, be real, real has smoke yeah. box right and he's a back in the car so we had uh, something very slim and we called it backseat bosses <laughs> so i was gonna get driven in the backseat of a car right. and just talk to these guys like talk to Word. everybody in the city sure. like sure. so that was the sure. first idea we didn't sure. even film one because the logistics didn't it's, make sense it's funny because the car test is big now with the elliot wilson exactly yeah, exactly yeah. right so yeah. i mean it's it's tried and true right um then we had uh, off the cuff which was an interview like this and it would have been it might have been a podcast i don't know if we we were going to release it as a podcast but it's in, a, in our studio and in, in the studio or the office where we store the clothes you've seen there gotcha yeah so and that was going to be like an interview but it was so awkward like and i don't mean to downplay the the three or four guests that we had on there not you guys weren't awkward it's just the way I had it in my mind and the way it came out was totally way different. Way different, yeah. Way different. It, I thought it was going to be some Larry King shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. it was, it was uh, and you know what? It's it's trying, man. You got to try shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, fail, fail, fail forward. You got to try and, and you don't call it off. You just go to the next thing. So we went from that. Then we took a break from it because, so what you're seeing right now, when I came in, sorry, just to... Go ahead, scatter, sidebar. Si when I came in, they were doing... At, the clothing was at the point where they called it the summer capsules and that was going to be the last of their printed tees okay the summer capsule so then their model now is that when they release them it's a collection mm. just like in fashion right mm. once you that collection goes that collection's gone yeah it's the next collection so you have to buy or yeah. you should buy it 
Because it's not coming back. It's not coming back. Yeah. Right? Tight. Uh, So that's the model they went to. And then, so when I came in, it was a summer capsule, and it was still printed tees, uh, baseball jerseys. Now it's gone to cut and sew. Um, So what you're wearing is a T1. Right. Am I saying it right, producer? Yeah, T1. And it's a T2 that we just released. Just this last August 13th. Yeah. So in the span of this time, while we took a break from trying to get a show or trying to get some sort of media outlet off the ground because they they really focused in on the T1 release, which Mm -hmm. we're wearing right now. So then I go, okay. Somehow we want to advertise the clothes, but we want to kind of bring the message of the brand. Yeah. So by now I'm I'm kind of studying different things out there and I'm studying Gary V and all these things, right? So I understood I understood something that uh, Gary V says a lot now, but it's something I read when I was like 20 years old okay. from Jim Brown. So Gary V kind of makes it a point like, listen, you got to bring so much value to other people so that they fuck with your brand. 100%. Jim Rohn said this in the 80s. If you read his material, Jim, Jim Rohn. Rohn is one of the uh, well-known motivational speakers. He's like OG to a lot of the motivational gotcha, gotcha. speakers yeah. that exist They today. came up off of his Yeah, sediments. Tony Robbins yeah. and uh, all these other guys, they came up under him and Earl Nightingale and all that. And I was reading all these wow, things. Wow, that's and he OG said, names this right is, there. This is, this is hard. What he said was, you can get anything you want in life if you can help other people get what they want. That's cool. That's so cold. So I go, okay, so why why do we need to try to tell our, like, what self fire it is? Why do I need to sit in front of a camera and do that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't I just get people that we think or live that kind of lifestyle? And you know what, what that means? It's just that aspirational, um, dedicated to, to a, a belief, de- mm-hmm, dedicated mm-hmm. to a goal, mm-hmm. and just make them tell the story. <laughs> Flip it and then give them promotion in the, in this, in the meantime. It's and that's our work. what uh, self-portraits became. Mm. And I was, I'm, and that's, this is all within this year. Right. One year ago, this didn't exist. None of this was, this is all just thoughts, right? Mm. And it was, it was a lot of logistics behind it. People see what we throw on our, on our webpage, our Instagram page, and whoa, that's so cool and stuff. There is a lot. There is still, this is not a big company where we have, you know, hundreds of employees. This and is interns just doing me, the hard work. Kev, yeah. uh, I got to give a shout out to Val too. Val holds it down no behind doubt. the scenes. You know, Val. Yeah. And and with a lot of camera things, and and Kev has to subcontract a lot of times. Like it's a lot of moving parts to do with such a small team. Right. Right. Yeah, the team. So the team is locked in. The self portrait thing came out, and I really am proud of it because. Mm-hmm. It does exactly what I wanted it to do, and it just also reflects our brand. But to show that we're not, it's self hired and we're not selfish. Yeah, you're you selfless. Know? It's selfless because we're really trying to put on people, and we're really about the city too. Like, I really believe that Vancouver is just at that tipping point where there will be a cultural renaissance, just like in Toronto, just like um, in Atlanta. All it, yeah. it, Toronto has the the wave right now in Canada. I think Vancouver's next. Vancouver's got And next. so self Fire, we just wanted to be there amidst all this culture. So that's why we really had to make a conscious decision to split the company into two divisions, the, the media and almost creative agency side and the clothing side. Got you. Right? So um, to make all that, to, have, to the point of all the, the whole story is that how you come into this picture is that the podcast was an idea we had two years ago. We wanted to do it, try different shows, didn't work, right? But I didn't want to just hop on a podcast. The self-portrait things was the start, right? But the po- portraits took, they take a lot of energy just to get a one minute clip. Yeah, 60 seconds. But sometimes the people I meet, I talk to them for two hours, mm. but their conversations will be cut to one minute to, to make almost like a trailer. Yeah. So we needed another platform where we can be more consistent weekly after week mm-hmm. to have content, to have um, just a, a platform for people to And a to conversation, talk. yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I believe we could do it like nobody else. 100%. And the quality, see, the thing is with self-hired and why- It's, it's 100% about the quality, man. On every platform. It's not just, it's, it's not streetwear. Cool. It's, like, it's, it's, it's Like it's I fashion. said, the cream will rise to the top. 100%. And that's what I it's done. I believe that. And that's why you attract like-minded people, Exactly. Right? So- cut to how you came into this is 
I think somewhere along the line, Kev called me and said, yo, we got to do a portrait with this guy or, you yeah, know, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's doing all these things with basketball. He's in wealth management, blah, blah. He's a young guy, but he's so ambitious. He just sounds really legit. Can you meet him? And I'm like, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, we're maybe. still working on this other port, you know? And so, yeah. you know how that goes. And then when I met you and the first conversations we had at the coffee shop, I said, it's on. Yeah, let's go. Because this is yeah. the guy we've been waiting for. And ladies and gentlemen, you've heard his story. This is the first time I heard it this deep. I know elements of it. This is the first time I've heard it this deep. You are in good hands because he's been through a lot and he's able to use education, exp uh, tough experiences to educate himself. And that's the whole point of Think Space. So how we got Think Space is we came up with this idea to have a, a platform to be open-minded, to learn from other people, to have a place to debate about music about different things and it's a space to think really mm -hmm. right and you're going to hear us on our journey to learn different things and our perspectives might change over time our uh, views might alter but that's the whole point is, is we and want to invite everybody to be on this journey with us and that's the whole point of this and i think josh is the perfect person to uh, host this show to uh, guide us along the way and uh, i'm going to be here uh, pretty often and we're gonna just be here to give you guys the best. Yeah, we'll have we'll have other key marks of the show too. We have other personalities we are yet to introduce to you. We got a lot of good stuff coming your way. I mean, and the other thing too is it's a process. Like these things don't go away. They're yeah. out there. Episode one is gonna be episode one. Yeah. Like 2018. Oh, remember 2020? Remember in, in 2020? Remember 2018? Remember when we did that? And that's what speaks to um, self hired. Yeah, is like listen, if you want to go that route. You got to be improving every day. Like you, you, you're at this every day. That's that's what that means. Self ownership, right? And so, as much as listen, I might look back on these early, you know, first hundred episodes and be like, oh man, remember how I thought on philosophy and on determinism? Oh man, that was all trash. Yeah, now, now I have this. People grow, right? That's the beauty of people it. People grow, that's man. The thing. And it, the thing is, podcasts are such an amazing space because we want you to grow and learn in an elongated form. Mm -hmm. So let's not just try to, you know, put ten seconds in here. It's not about. It's not the vine of uh, of tomorrow. No, no, no. This is about actual thought and provoking thought. We don't want you to go through your life programmed right? Don't go through your life in this um, unconscious way of living. Go through your life in a conscious way of living. Make conscious decisions. Learn consciously it's every about, day, man. It's just right? So that's, what, that's why the people self -awareness. we bring in, self-awareness. Self-awareness is the big, I think that's the main underlying uh, approach that I think we want everybody to take. It's like, you, you don't have to agree with us. Mm -hmm. You don't have to agree with the guests that we have on here. You don't have to agree with how uh, certain people have gone to where they've gone but the self-awareness to be a learner, to be a student of life and a student of student of, uh, other of everything, hundred percent. We have so much to learn. Like we're so young. That's the thing. It's it enabled to what enables us to take this approach is to be extremely humble and realize, yeah, yeah, I've had a bunch of experiences. I know a bunch of stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, compared to the wealth of knowledge that's out there today, I know nothing. We don't know shit. Nothing. And so th that's a hard pill to take, especially as young men. Like ego yeah. r rules uh, so much that we do. We got testosterone coming out of our fucking ears, Word, right? But we And that's the thing too. I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of these things I I can do now because your mind, your, your you're, where you're at at a certain time wouldn't be ready for that. 100%. So if, 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 again, I don't want to sound all like dusty fairy kind of <laughs> law of attraction. Woo, 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 woo. But when you put, I, we put the thought out there and it, it, it comes full circle, but when you're ready for it. 100%. So just like I was talking about how stars align when you're, you're doing everything you're doing, and it just connected at the time we needed to connect it with us. At the us. perfect time. So, and then also the space that we have right now, this contract wouldn't have been available back then, mm -hmm. right? To have this space. Um, timing is a big thing. Where we're at in our lives and exactly. the availability All of the guests. pieces of puzzles come together, not when, not when you're ready, but when it's time, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you always just got to keep pushing forward. And like, like I said, all the pieces of the puzzle we have, the people that we have on our team now, mm -hmm. 
like that wasn't available to us and even even the time. guests that were um uh, exactly. we can line up like i mean to t- tbd but just know there's some heavy hitters coming your way and yeah. i don't mean i mean yes local heavy hitters but i mean national heavy hitters international heavy hitters people that and these people come to bring you value like these people are not coming they're coming to tell their story they're coming to do um to come to chop it up with us but you can pull uh, application out of every single person that we bring on here and beyond that they're just people you want to kick it with i mean like people i mean all the people that i listen to people that I, the sources that i draw knowledge from these are people that i aspire to take good things from and um people that i want to be like in a sense like these are people that um i have so much to learn and gain from gain from and i'm not just talking from athletics uh, I'm talking from athletics. I'm talking from finance. I'm talking from entrepreneurship. I'm talking from education. I'm talking from philosophy. Well, it's going to be so broad because as humans, we want to have a broad base of knowledge and, atta- and attack that in an aggressive way with openness. Yeah. And that's what, that's what we're about. Yeah. And we invite, we invite everybody to just uh, chime in, comment in, send us an email, send us a DM of what you'd like to see. Uh, yeah, we're, we're here for you, man. And what, what kind of things you want us to discuss. But, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you're in good hands. And uh, let's just enjoy the show. Uh, just one thing before we take off here, though. Uh, I really wanted to ask you this because I... Uh, Please. I didn't expect to come in here to get a I story know. like that. I'm I mean, blindsided a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it was, it was deep. And I think that was needed for the show because now people know exactly your story. And a lot of people will resonate with it. You know, I, man... I really... I resonate with a lot of elements of your story and I think a lot of people will resonate with it. And you know what, Ben, like I hate to cut you off, but before you go off, you know, with your question, it's more about, I, I, no part of my life is about, um, is about, I mean, it's about retrospection, but it's not about feeling sorry. It's not about guilt. It's about like, my life is great, my man. Like you can say bad stories or, or tough upbringings, man. At the end of the day, we've made it to a, to a great spot. I'm, and, and like, we're blessed every day. We're blessed just to be in this situation, in this studio with these amazing, with this amazing team behind us, with these amazing graphics and the quality of this podcast that's coming out. I'm sitting here drinking coconut water. Like how, how fucking lucky am I to have this level of health? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's a lot of gratitude that comes yeah. into this as well sorry yeah. i didn't mean to cut you off uh no i just man there's just so much that uh we can draw upon and just just even that little uh, thing you said about the coconut water man <laughs> first world problems man is 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 a whole different thing and so just for everyone to remember like someone else is always having a bad day man for sure then it's not to downplay whatever you're going through but there's always something worse you know i was telling you i was listening to tony robbins before i got in here you, people choose suffering Mm. It, it's not like slavery slavery is a choice no, 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 i knew you were gonna say that but no no people choose gave suffering me the eyes. <laughs> over time right because right 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 you know, if you really uh dig deep into uh, a lot of literature that's out there uh, well i mean yeah just tools and once mm-hmm. you have the tools you can you can really change your mind change your perspective man what i was five five months ago <laughs> yeah not five years ago what was that five months ago yeah nothing well, is, yeah. you know you just keep changing so with that i'd like to ask sure um outside of this podcast and outside of uh, all the career things you're doing and outside of all your uh endeavors uh just is some for the listeners to kind of uh relate to or get something out of what is one habit you're trying to either stop or trying to pick up or both mm. Um, well, I'm almost there, but it's not a habit yet. So I got a good answer for both. Actually, you know what? I thought you had me stuck, but I got a good answer for both. So one habit that I'm trying to kick is, uh, my addiction to food. Now that might sound really fucking weird okay. because I don't look like an overweight dude, um, but we all have addictions. You got an Asian girlfriend, man. That's going to be Oh hard, man. She <laughs> So good. Anyways, um, we all have an addiction to food in a certain way. Like I'm, uh, I gravitate towards, um, unhealthy foods too much. And, and really, I, Oh, for sure. For sure. Okay. You, I know. Like I seen you with the, the I audit, boxes and- I audit the hell out of my life. I do. But yeah. like, listen, at the end of the day, there's still, I want to change my taste preferences. So like I actually eat really healthy salads and, yeah. and good meats and organic meats and all that stuff. Yeah. I do eat quite well. And that's a big part because you are what you eat and all that stuff. But, um, 
at the end of the day, I still, I have a mental tick in my head where I want to uh, revert back to sugars and carbs. And I'm trying to break that subconscious habit, mm -hmm. right? Cause like, say I'm lit, like I still want to get that double cheese from Mickey D's. Oh, word. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, so I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to change that. And, um, and then the other habit I'm trying to pick up is there's a Chinese proverb, and this is mad corny. That's me, man. I, there, I'm all the, about the quotes, the, man. Fuck, a, if you think this, if you think anything we say is corny, push, the whole podcast is gonna. <laughs> it's not you. for you, bro. This it's is not, not for you, not man. For We're you. here to learn, baby. There's um, there's a Chinese proverb that, that says um, no man that rises before six, um, 360 days of the year fails to make his family rich, and that's um, wow. take the rich out of that. But I mean, wow, actually, don't take the rich out of that. But take it how you wanna. The, the idea is like, listen, if you have discipline 360 days of the year, if you get up while everyone else is asleep, if you put that time in, um, your life is going to be better and you're not, it's not you that's going to be better. It's your family. That's going to be better. Your level of discipline is going to, um, uh, affect everyone around you. So I'm trying to get up, uh, between four and five every day. Mm -hmm. And so I'd say I probably hit that like uh, anywhere from two to four days of the week right now. And I'm trying to get that up to seven days a week and not like have that a cheat day crazy. on Sunday. I'm trying to like really get up. And, and that means to me, that's so important because it's like, I'm trying to make efficient hours in a day. So yeah. you're way more, um, yeah. Spoiler alert. You're way more fucking efficient in the morning when no one else is up. Right. You can get your workout in, 100%. you can get your studying in. Now those guess agree. what in the morning, your willpower is actually at its fullest. The willpower is actually, it's a reserve in your head. It's a muscle in your head. You train that muscle gets exhausted through the day. You have less efficient hours at night. It's just a fact, mm -hmm. right? Because you've gone through the whole day. You have less efficient hours at night. Let's minimize that Netflix time. Boom. Cut that off. And let's get that into the morning where I can be efficient in those three hours rather than wasting those three hours. All of a sudden I've doubled up. I've just added really, if you take the negative and the positive, yeah. that's a six hour swing. So if I can do that, I feel like I'm really going to be on the next level. And that's what I'm trying to get yeah. to. Uh, that's crazy because uh, I swear to God, we did not coordinate this. He didn't even know what I was going to ask today or whatever, but my two habits are almost identical okay okay almost okay, okay. So, 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 so. um Kev, so, what 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 are your uh, if you had two habits <laughs> um one that you're trying to change and uh, i swear we did not coordinate <laughs> this but uh the one i'm trying to change and this is because of the crazy summer we just had right and this summer i swear we just we partied hard this summer and, and got a lot and done a lot of that had to do with me not ever having the time to and, and while we were sending all this, all, getting plans for this podcast and everything together and stuff, I just, it was a lot of events this summer. Last okay. summer, last no, summer was, good. last summer I had a lot of weddings to go. I had seven weddings to go to. Right. This summer was just, it, it was just self-hired. We just wanted to be on the streets. Like we just wanted baby. to make sure everybody knew. Good. Yeah. And we did that through going to certain events and we, and all these events were at night and filled with alcohol and you know, of okay. course, self-hired, we had to represent. So you, you had know, to be there. It was, it was, so it's a party, right? So, um, that brings me to the, the habit I'm trying to kick is that, uh, in the summer when you're on the go all the time, when you're staying out very late and stuff, just like you, it was not just so much of the kind of food. Cause I still don't really care. I do care, but I can get away with a lot of right, 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 right. kinds of food, but I want to be able to meal prep a lot more mm. right i so see I you want, kev shit i see you yeah yeah okay. yes but then that's only very recently but that's what ex i had to do in college and while i was working in the gym i had no choice right right but i eat out oh i in the summer especially i eat out a lot especially and if you know you, you have an asian girlfriend so you know when we eat out like it's not just like me i can't eat out by myself oh, i need a, it's an event I, it, it needs to be with people and i i'm usually in, like in our my culture i don't know about everybody else but in in like the vietnamese culture is like there is no bill splitting <laughs> <laughs> one person takes the bill right 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 no i know you heard, I've, been like, in, I've, I've been in those family one dinners, person man. takes I've the bill been. it's an honor to take the bill that's crazy you man. know what i mean especially well i don't do that with a bunch of random people. I do that with my close friends. Yeah, your like, phone's about to be, yo, let's get dinner. Again. No, 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 no. Fuck all you. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you the habit I'm trying to kick <laughs> is, is, is that is, it's just that we just go, we want, we go out so much. Like it's beyond what a normal person would got you. imagine. Right. Like I got, I got people you. probably like seen like the, like I like, 
I'm Asian, so we post food all the time. That's what Asian people do. And they've always seen, like, where, what do you do with your life? You know, like, all you do is between clubs and restaurants. How is this self hired thing even running? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's one thing I'm trying to kick. It's not only just for the, the, the economical side of things, but um, just because it's not that healthy. From a right? nutrition standpoint. But from I, a nutrition I, standpoint, if you're eating, like, you know, especially Asian food all the time and – um, just big amounts at one sitting and the time, the time aspect. So yep, takes meal prepping is something I, I was very used to when I was in college and working and doing everything else. In the last two or three years, I just kind of threw that kinda out the window because I've been chilling, right? Um, so now getting back into it and being more, uh, having I actually have more time than I did in college. So I was like, what excuse do I have? Right, right. And the health aspects, right? So, sure, and sure. it's crazy because I know all these, I studied these things, nutrition and all you that You were stuff. aware, you just were Yeah, there. and it's just, you just, you know. I get it, man. I you get just it. like your there. beer and, and, and oysters and, and, and pig ears and, and, all and all that, that Asian stuff. goodness yeah. and, you know, yeah. duck eggs. Vermicelli bowls, all oh, the yeah, duck man. eggs, man. The so that's duck the eggs. habit I'm trying to kick. The cat habit I'm trying to pick up, and this is exactly kind of alludes to what you're doing with the time that you wake up and that. Um, now's the time to focus. And I just want to also add this in about uh, self hire and everything we're doing with this podcast is just now's the time to focus. We've we've been out there representing at these events, at these parties. We've been out. Now is the time to get in. Get the like, business. In the last few years, I've I've uh, been in different paths. You've been in different paths. Uh, Kevin, Mike, and they've been in different journeys of their lives. It's all come together now. And now is the time to really just put it on for uh, everyone who's listening, everyone who's in the city. Now's the time to do it, right? So mm -hmm. uh, one habit I'm trying to kick is just I'm really going to be uh, selfish with my time. Mm. Because... Uh, in, the, in the summer, we're kid, we, you know, you know, yeah, the scorpion I, I know, I know. playing. You got to cruise at night. You got to meet this person, that person. Yeah, yeah, hang yeah. out with these girls. You got to hang out with these Kev's people. Busy, and, man, you know, Kev's popular. There's a lot of stuff popping off throughout and, the city. And, and family on top of that. Yeah, family is another Kev's element an to too, it too. So yeah. So now I got to be selfish with my time. And on top, to to add to that habit is, I'm trying. One thing that I read was, the, um, I forgot her name, but she was on Impact Theory. Uh, Impact Theory is another podcast. Great podcast, um, by the way. Yeah, she she says or she recommends to sleep in a room without your phone because there was a time where <sighs> that was not the same thing, right? And I right. remember those times, right. right? So I've in the past week or so, I've slept with the alarm on my watch ah. and not with the phone. So by around nine o'clock. The phone gets shut down. I got you. Uh, just like I was talking to you the other day, I was hey, like, man. "I'm shutting down, boys." He, like, Kev, won't be Kev, able to Kev's get. not just talking to talk; he's walking on the walk. Yeah, man. he hit the group chat the other day. He's like, "Listen, boys," I was like, "I was eight thirty. I was studying." He's like, "Listen, yeah, I'm about to shut her down for the night." Same and I was thing. like, mm, like okay. I, "I try to be, I try to be up between four and five as well." Yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah know, beat the sun. Beat the sun. You know, you know. That's that's what I always say. The sun never beats me up. Can't beat this. Yeah, exactly. Right? In the summertime was a whole different game. You know that. <laughs> I was getting home when the sun comes out. You know, yo, I was beating it just in a different way. Exactly. So that's that's the two things I would say is that kind of coincides with each other and kind of is parallel to what you're doing is that uh, I want to meal prep a lot more. And it's once you're in the groove, just like anything, once you're in the groove, you're in the groove. So habit, everybody listening out there, just fucking get started somehow. Just get the ball rolling a little bit. Yeah. Right. Even if it's just a couple of little things. Right. And the other part is just the is is the phone, man, because you won't believe how different your sleep is. It's, it's a crazy. deep sleep because yeah, sure. your phone. I don't know the signs behind it, but the Wi-Fi and the shit, the signals in the air. Yeah, and then also it just tempts you to look at the screen and, and keep texting or keep whatever. Oh yeah, there's a million before, temptations. And then the blue light fucks with your your. Oh yeah. Cadium rhythm uh, or whatever. Uh, circadian. Yeah, circadian, uh, circadian rhythm. Yeah. Circadian rhythm. Yeah, you got that right. Um, no, for sure. I'm going to double up on you and say, listen, uh, keep your keep your alarm on your phone. What I do, because I actually hate getting up early, um, even though that's contradictory to everything I've just said in my entire life. The funny life. thing is I'm actually a morning person. Yeah. I'm, I, I see. Yeah. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. I am. See. Mm, it was tough pause. for me to stay out late pause. with a lot of these guys. Pause. It was so, tough for So, me. hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Pause. 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 So, like... Um, I hate getting up in the morning. I'm 1000% a morning person though, which means I'm super efficient. I'm awake yeah. in the morning. I'm getting shit done. Um, but uh, 
take your phone. No, see what I was going to say is that your my willpower, I swear to God, like 10 minutes after I gain consciousness and 10 <laughs> minutes before I go to bed is at its lowest fucking point. I'm yeah. so bad at it. But once I'm up, I'm up. Yeah. So take your phone, keep the alarm on that thing. And put it across the room? No, 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 no. Oh. Not even that. This is I'm, no word of a lie. Ask my girlfriend, okay? Um, take your phone, put it in a bathroom. In the separate room, put it in the bathroom. Oh, so when it goes off, you got to get up or take it a step further. Make sure your phone's fully charged. Okay, uh, pro tip, pro tip out there. Don't overcharge your cell phone. It kills the battery. So make sure before you go to bed, it's at 100%. All right. Take that hour, charge it up. Overnight, make sure it's at 100%. Put the alarm off. Put it in the bathtub. So you have to get in the shower. <laughs> like that, that shit pause, is loud. Pause. So you have to get up out your bed, walk out to the bathroom, get in the bathtub or the shower, turn it off. And the other thing about that is tubs echo sound. So yeah, all of a sudden yeah. that alarm clock is like so eight sounds, fucking times uh, louder and you want to get out. And if you have the willpower, if, you're, if you are so, I'm sorry, if you don't have the willpower and you're so into getting back in the bed that you're going to get out of the tub and then walk back to your bed with your phone shut that shit off kudos to you yeah. <laughs> you deserve you deserve it you deserve another half an hour in that bed <laughs> you deserve it you deserve it for damn sure, man. man and that's that's man i'm that's and, what i'm talking about and that's this something is, i mean that's just i just pick stuff up from people around me man i just pick stuff up from and uh, that's uh, I, that's the most i can hope for everyone listening is just to pick one or two things out of everything that we say today or in other episodes um but uh, until then uh, you you're here with josh biggins i'm kevin thanks for tuning in Self-hired, think space. Uh, anything you want to say, Josh? That's a wrap, man. Basically, just ride with us. This is going to be fun. As serious as we might have been, um, we get a little bit looser as we go. And, Check uh, us out, man. Check there's, us there's, out. there's some fire episodes to come your way. Just you wait. Just you wait. Yes, we'll, yes. we'll be here. And if you want to learn, be better. And again, it's not a, like a, a self-development thing. It's just a being a better human all around thing. Come rock with us. I guarantee. And by the way, you're just at work doing nothing. You're just in the car doing nothing. I know you're just doing nothing. You're just at home watching TV. You're not really even listening to TV. Throw the podcast on. You got to clean, the throw the podcast on. on. You got to cook. Change the station, man. Change you the station. You can't always have Scorpion playing. You, you can't, can't always listen to uh, all, the, all the music you, over and over again. You can't listen to Takashi 6 9 and be get more that, positive get person. That you know what I'm saying? Turn that, keep it up with the, the Kardashians station once on. in a while, everybody. Switch it up. Be better while you do that. All that, yeah. all that secondary shit. I mean, you know, appreciate you guys for rocking Peace with us. Peace and love. That's we'll what see I see. Thank you. That's a wrap. Self-fired episode Think one. Space. I'll catch you. Peace.